And welcome into the Saunders County Online pregame show. Awesome McNorton joined by head coach of your Wahoo Warriors, Chad Fox. As Wahoo's postseason continues on as your Wahoo Warriors now in to the quarterfinals hosting Broken Bow, the eight seed here in Class C1. And coach, let's go back first to last week, though. A win over SCOTUS once again, 46-0. to But how difficult was that one to say, all right, we're playing a team who was super familiar with us. We were familiar with them, but that's definitely not easy, especially as the team who won the first time around. How difficult was it? Yeah, it's always a little bit difficult to beat a team twice. You know, that always is a challenge. Uh, You know, they're going to make some adjustments on what they did on their end, and we weren't sure what those adjustments were going to be. So there was, uh, you know, some uncertainty there going in that game. And then the other side of it is you got some 15, 16 year old kids. And our kids didn't do this, but I mean, you're playing somebody you, you kind of beat handedly before. And sometimes you're not sure if that same sense of urgency and focus is going to be there with your team, uh, with your preparations, you know, going into that game. But, um, you know, we, we found a way to win. It was uh, – we, we didn't play maybe as well on offense as we would hoped. But defensively, we were lights out. And uh, anytime your defense plays that well, you're going to get you're going to have a chance to win the game. And, and our kids played well. And, and we uh, survive in advance. That's all we're about right now is, is just trying to find a way to win and, and get another week of football. Coach, just talk about the way your defense has been playing here recently. Back-to-back shutouts, now five shutouts on the year. How much have they kind of progressed throughout the course of the season? Are they playing their best football right now? Yeah, and and, uh, here's the deal. Hopefully there's some better football yet because we're going to have some tough teams coming here, uh, you know, as as these playoffs progress. But, you know, we we are playing better now than where we were at the beginning of the season. If you look at uh, just as as an entire group, how the tackling has gotten better. Our pursuit to the football has gotten better. Uh, just, just all of those things. We're playing pretty fast right now, and, and we're playing way more physical than where we we were at the beginning of the year. And and it's been fun to see that growth with the kids as they get more and more reps. Because you got a lot of youngsters out there. Uh, you know, their confidence just continues to grow, which allows them to play fast. And anytime you can play fast and physical in high school football, you're going to have uh, a, a pretty high success rate. And, and that's kind of what we're seeing right now on defense. Once again, you're, we're talking to head coach Chad Fox here on the Saunders County Online pregame show as the Warriors in quarterfinal football action against Broken Bow here on a Friday night. But, Coach, you just mentioned how physical you guys have been. And let's go ahead and highlight a key part of the team. These guys don't get shout out enough. Your offensive line and, and your defensive line and how well they've been playing physical and dominating that side of the football. Yeah, the O-line and D-line have, uh, you know, they, they never get their names mentioned uh, a whole lot because your skill guys always do. And, and uh, But they've been, they've been uh, doing a pretty good job all season long. Um, you know, and they've gotten better as the season has progressed as well. Uh, the communication across the front has, has, increased, has gotten better. Uh, you know, just playing together as a unit and, and becoming, again, more familiar with the different fronts that we're going to see, whether uh, we're talking about the offensive line or, or the different styles of offenses that we've seen. We've seen a vast. Uh, variety of offenses as we've gone through this season. And, and the D-line is, has done a great job with that, as well as our O-line. So, you know, it's been fun watching those guys. Uh, you know, those guys up front have done a, a, a great job. You know, Jonas Schnockenberg and, and Jake Scanlon and, and Landon Brigham and Trevor Beavers and Eli Emerson are the, the guys across the front on the offensive line. And then you, uh, you know, on the D-line, we, we have uh, – uh, you know, uh, Jonas, or no, excuse me, not Jonas. We have uh, Jake Scanlon again, and and uh, Eli Emerson are the two main anchors in there. Eli Shada played some DN, has done some really nice things for us for a sophomore, and then Luke Speck uh, is, is well playing on the inside. So those guys controlling the line of scrimmage is always a key in any game. And if we can control the line of scrimmage again, you're going to give yourself a chance to win the game, and and that's just another one of those things that we look at. Hopefully, we have an advantage each week when we, we line up against uh, whatever opponent we line up against. Once again, we're talking to head coach Chad Fox here with us on the Saunders County Online pregame show. And coach, we talked about the familiarity that you had last week taking on uh, the Shamrocks. Now a broken bow team, a team who not familiar with and uh, a team who doesn't play a lot of similar teams, some of those kind of things. What's the challenge that presents of saying, all right, this is a team we really don't know what they're about. How difficult is that? Yeah, you know, it, it makes it a little the, the familiarity is not there at all. I mean, they got some nice players that looks like on film, but you don't know how those players will match up with with our players because, and, and that's a little bit of the question mark. 
Uh, the other thing is some of the schemes that they run offensively is just very, very different. Uh, we would have to go back all the way to the Nebraska City game to probably think of just thinking about the option uh, offenses. And, and we haven't seen too many of those since Nebraska City. And, and they're going to be a little bit different in terms of double tight Maryland eye option offense. So it, it's, they're going to want to play football in a phone booth. And uh, we're going to have to buckle up and, and uh, play physical and play fast like we want uh, in order to, to, to rise to the challenge of what their offense is going to give. But, yeah, you're exactly right. You know, not, not having any uh, like opponents makes it difficult to make some of those comparisons that you want to make in terms of personnel and who we have at this spot and that spot. So you don't know if you have advantages really in personnel that we maybe know in some of these other games that we've been playing. So, no, it's a challenge. We're looking forward to it. Uh, the kids are eager to get after it again, and, and uh, we'll just have to see how it plays out. Coach, how has your team kind of handled throughout the course of the season of the target on their back growing bigger and being the hunted rather than the hunters after you defeat Pierce and then back that up with a win at Ashland in weeks one and two? It's just kind of grown since then. How have your boys handled that kind of pressure of saying, all right, we're going to get everyone's best shot? Yeah, you know, we, we talked a, a little bit about that mindset of, of, of the shift, you know, where you're trying to hunt the teams that you're trying to knock off. Well, now it's kind of flipped the other way, uh, and, and we've got to continue to be aggressive. you got to continue to do the things that you were doing and when you were, uh, you know, hunting those opponents. You've got to have that same mindset, um, and that, that's one thing I think our kids have done a good job of. One thing we try to turn our focus to is just ourselves. Uh, how can we get better individually and how we can get better as a team or, or as a unit, whether it's talking about special teams, defense, or offense. And, and we really try to focus on those things. And, and, and if we can continue to get better, whether it's each and every day in practice or each week in a game, uh, then I think our team is going to continue to move in the right direction. And then the, the pressure part that you're talking about, you know, these guys, we, one thing we talked about as we started the playoffs, you know, having a number one seed is, 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 is a, sometimes a tough deal because you are getting everybody's best game. Uh, which you should be in this time of year when you're in the playoffs. But, uh, you know, pressure is a privilege because that means there's people that expect things from you. And, and our kids know that we have high, high expectations of this program. And I don't think they feel that pressure. I think they uh, embrace that. And I think they, uh, they, they know that they are always expected to play at a high level, prepare at a high level. And, and uh, our kids have really embraced that, that mindset. And it's uh, put us in a good spot, you know, no doubt as we, as we move through these playoffs. And coach, final question for you. You just talked about uh, your team being the one seed and the road to Lincoln, Nebraska goes through Wahoo. Talk about how much of an advantage that is to have your home crowd there and your home game routine without any travel. Yeah, absolutely. You know, anytime we get to play here at home, it's always a special deal for our kids. You know, our seniors, we tell them each and every time, we don't know how many more home games you're going to have. Um, you know, this might be your last one. So we got to treat it as, you know, this is the only opportunity that we have and we got to make the most of it. And, uh, you know, having home games logistically, it's, it's so much easy, the familiarity of what you're doing throughout the day. Uh, you know, you don't have to worry about getting on a bus and traveling in several hours to get somewhere. You know, all those things are, are you know, kicked by the wayside. We don't have to worry about that. And, and you know, I, 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 you know, having these home fields is, is deserved because of the great work that we did throughout the season. I think we had one of the toughest schedules uh, in C1 this year, and we were able to, to, to beat all those teams, and, and I think we earned that one seed. So it's, it's been a great thing to have all these home games, and, and again, playing in front of our home crowd, all that familiarity is, is super comforting for those high school kids because you don't have to deal with a lot of that different change and, and not knowing you know, you know, where the lockers are going to be, the locker room is going to be, where you're going to go for halftime, what are you going to do for pregame. You don't have any of those worries. Or just ride in a, in a yellow school bus for three hours to get to a game. That's not a worry. So uh, our kids are really uh, enjoy playing at home, and it's it's always great in front of our fans and our students because uh, they they bring the energy every week. Coach, there should be a lot of energy tonight in Wahoo. We're very excited for this one, and uh, best of luck to you, my friend. I appreciate it, Austin. Thank you. And welcome into the Saunders County Online pregame show. Austin McNorton joined by head coach of your Wahoo Warriors, Chad Y'all ready? Can you hear me all right? Yep. Yeah. I'll turn this up a little bit. How's that? Can you hear me better now? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. All right. I am 
ready to go in three, two, one. And welcome to Wahoo High School here on Saunders County Online and Wahoo Public YouTube. Austin McNorton and John Herrera here with you for this Class C1 quarterfinal action between your one-seeded Wahoo Warriors and the eight-seeded Indians of Broken Bow. John, you can't ask for much better weather here on a Friday night, and two great teams are in town. It's a great day to be a Warrior, Austin. I mean, what, what could you ask for about beautiful fall night? We got a good team coming to town. It's playoff football. Let's get after it. So it looks like Broken Bow wins the opening coin toss. And thanks so much to Chad Fox for joining us in the Saunders County Online pregame show. And they will elect to defer to the second half. So Wahoo will get the football. And, John, what are your keys to tonight's game? Well, since we just got done with Halloween, I have a theme. It's a Halloween theme. The first one is throw the bones. We want that defense to step up tonight. This is a power rushing team. And they're going to try to grind it out and lull you to sleep. We want that front seven to bring it tonight and keep this offense at bay. The second one is we want to be possessed. We want to have good possessions. We want to own the ball. We want to possess it. That's their, that's their plan, too. They want to run the clock out by holding the ball and pounding the ball. We want to limit their number of possessions because they're definitely going to try to limit ours. This game will be a certain number of possessions. Third, be the executioner. You want to execute. We don't want to have turnovers. We want to run routes. We want to block. Last week we had a couple miscues blocking. And the fourth Halloween special, we got it right now. It's not the Great Pumpkin, but it's Landon, it's Kip, it's the brothers Edmonds and Caden. Let's make a play in special teams tonight. And on the first kickoff, they actually do kick it to Sam Edmonds, who catches the ball at his own 28-yard line, takes it forward two yards. And here comes out the Warrior offense, first and 10 on their own 30-yard line. Wahoo comes out in the Savannah Banana jerseys tonight. <laughs> yellow pants, yellow jerseys, blue numbers, and blue helmets. They'll be going left to right across your screen. And as far as Broken Bow goes, they come out in the all-whites tonight. White pants, white jerseys, red numbers, and white helmets. So here comes out Jace Kaminsky, and they come out in a unique formation to start out the game. Kaminsky in the backfield, and Bordowski stands to his right in the gun. Jace takes the snap. Noah gets the handoff off to the left side. Has a lane down the sideline and a good pickup for Noah on first down of about seven yards up to the Warrior 37-yard line. Yeah, another good rushing play to kick the game off. Um, they're coming out in a 4-4 defense. Their front dudes are pretty solid, but they're pretty even across the board. So when we get to doing the motions and all that types of things, we're gonna Coach Fox will be watching their adjustments. Noah, that's his 153rd carry this season. Now up to 857 rushing yards. Wardowski stands in the backfield, second and four for Wahoo. Kaminsky looking to throw here to the near sideline. Wide open, caught by Avery Weeding for a Warrior first down up to the Wahoo 44-yard line. Yeah, testing that, testing that secondary quick, trying to get a feel for their coverage. It looks like they're in a three-deep. And from the film I saw, they look like they're kind of a three-deep team. Very basic, 4-4, four, four, keep things structured, play fast. And uh, we'll see how our spread sets affect that front. This is an Indian defense who gives up 16 points per game, 140 yards through the air per contest, and 165 on the ground throughout the course of the year. Kaminsky in the option, keeps it himself, and not much that time. It looked like kind of a miscommunication as to when it was snapped. It didn't look like Jace was really ready for the play to start when it did. Yeah, the timing seemed a little off on that, and then the defense got ahead of our, our guys up front, and things kind of broke down a little bit. But. How much of an advantage, too, is it Broken Bow? We'll see their option offense quite a bit tonight. How much of it is an advantage is that for the Indian defense on an option play to say, we're practicing against this every day? Yeah, yeah, you've got your assignments. You know, you got to have a guy for quarterback, dive, pitch, all that. So they've seen that in their own practice. So they're familiar with that scheme. 10.34 to go here in the first quarter. Opening drive of the game. Kaminsky rolls to his left and throws towards the sideline. Fight for it, I think. I think it was caught, it. Yeah. yeah. Nice catch by Barrett LaValle. It was tough to say. There were so many white jerseys around him, and somehow the ball hit him right in the chest. Yeah. Another good throw by Jace rolling out to his left. That's Barrett's 12th catch of the year. Now up to 283 or 93 yards. He also has four touchdowns, and it's third and one for Wahoo. Now on the broken bow, 43 yards or 48-yard line. Bordowski gets the handoff up the middle and goes nowhere. Broken bow there for even a loss of a half of a yard. 
On third and one, the Warriors go nowhere off of a nice tackle made on the inside by Bryce Chaplin, the leading tackler for Broken Bow this season. And now Wahoo likely in a punting situation on fourth and two from the Broken Bow 48. You'd assume punt here. You'd assume punt. Try and play sure field here. position battle. Wahoo's taking their time beforehand as the clock runs to 925. Like we're we're going to go for it. Wahoo comes out in their wildcat formation. Aggressive here early are the Warriors. Noah gets the snap, goes up the middle, and look at go. him go. Big hole down the far sideline, 30. And he'll go still in bounds down the sideline. What a play for Wahoo all the way to the Indian 23-yard line. Yeah, they get all those dudes. You had, you had 22 dudes within about four yards of the ball, <laughs> and all you need is a crease and a missed tackle, and that kind of a play happens. Boy, that play has been so effective for the Warriors all season long. And aggressive call by head coach yeah. Chad Fox, and the Warriors are now knocking on the door of the red zone. Kaminsky in the backfield, first and 10 Wahoo with 9.09 to go here in quarter number one. This time the handoff will go to the near side to Sam Edmonds, trying to juke out of a tackle, can't. Nice tackle made in the backfield that time by Coy Warden. He is 45th tackle this season out of the defensive back spot as Sam gets back to the line of scrimmage. That's it. His 17th carry this year for 110 yards. Yeah, a lot of variety of plays Coach Fox is coming out with. We're, we're going side to side. We're throwing it a little bit. We bring it in the power. I think he's, he's checking alignments on every one of those play calls to see how they're defending those. 8.36 to go here, quarter number one. It's second and 10 Wahoo on the Broken Bow 23-yard line right hash. Noah gets the handoff up the middle, finds another little crease and falls forward to the Broken Bow 19-and-a-half-yard line before Bryce Chaplin brings him down. Bryce now with 95 tackles this season to lead Broken Bow. He also has two fumble recoveries, and we'll be calling his name quite a bit tonight as he is also the leading offensive weapon for this Indian squad. They give Noah four yards, so it's second and six for Wahoo. Eight minutes exactly here on the opening drive of quarter number one. Kaminsky in the backfield, Avery weeding across the formation. Noah gets the handoff off to the right side, trying to sidestep a defender, falls forward for another yard. That time before Chaplin brings him down again. He also was helped that time by Broken Bow's quarterback, Eli Coble. But fourth and five now for Wahoo, and you're kind of in that no man's land here. Yeah, John. this is an interesting play call right here. If you had a, if you had a big leg, you could maybe think about field goal. You know, a 35-yard field goal. But uh, I'm not sure. Coach Fox is interested in threes. I think he likes sevens. So we'll see what he dials up here. Clock runs 7:20 to go here, first quarter. This is the opening drive of the football game. Wahoo started on their own 30, are now on the broken bow 18. Fourth and five for Wahoo. On the right hash, Kaminsky in the backfield, takes the snap, looking to throw wide open across the middle. It's behind and caught. Nice. Nice. What a catch by Wahoo. Nice. And it's a touchdown. Beautiful. Touchdown, Wahoo. What a catch by Josh Edmonds. Beautiful slant pass right there. They were in three deep, and he just cut across that corner's face, and Jace didn't roll out or anything. He sets up and just fired it in there, and that's a great catch in traffic for Wow, Josh. the throw was a little bit behind him, but Josh Edmonds hauls in his ninth reception of the year and his second touchdown on fourth and five. The Warriors score from 18 yards out, 7.03 to go first quarter, and Wahoo will come out for the point after. And Wahoo's win last week over SCOTUS in a 46-0 win. This was really the only flaw the Warriors had was point afters. So we'll see Avery Weeding come out for the PAT duty here in a pretty perfect weather night compared to last week where it was a lot more difficult. Good snap, good hold, point after is up, and it's no good. Wahoo really struggling with point afters this season, and there's another one. 7.03 to go, quarter number one, it's Wahoo six, and Broken Bow zero, you're tuned in to Warrior Football in Saunders County Online and Wahoo Public, and we'll be back in 60 seconds. At Medicine Man Pharmacy, we aspire to be the pharmacy provider confidently chosen by our clients for their family's everyday health needs because of our expertise, integrity, and honestly consistently exceeding their expectations. Reliability, bright spot, value, integrity, community building, and so much more can be found at Medicine Man Pharmacy of Wahoo. 
Hot Oil and Propane is continuing to be family-run and owned for 60 years. OOP Inc. is your Wahoo supplier for gas, diesel, propane, oil, grease, and products for your yard and acreage, including seed, fertilizer, and sprays to help keep your lawn and pastures beautiful. Find them online at OOPIncWahoo.com, call 402-443-3563, or stop by 3288 Ponderosa Drive. And welcome back to Wahoo, Nebraska here on Saunders County Online and Wahoo Public YouTube. Austin McNorton and John Herrera here with you from Wahoo, Nebraska on a beautiful Friday night in November. 7.03 to go here in quarter number one. Wahoo, a 70-yard touchdown drive capped off by an 18-yard touchdown pass. But the fourth key of the game for you, John, special teams, Wahoo is shooting himself in the foot right now, missing the point after yeah. and then kicking the ball right out of bounds. Two kicks in a row. I mean... They've, they've kind of struggled on some extra points this year, and they're, they're definitely missing Emilio. He's kind of their main PAT guy, and he's been out with an injury. But kicking the ball out of bounds is tough because it gives the other team field position, and we had the field position advantage before. You know, we're playing on this end of the field. Let's, let's limit those things. So let's play some D. So here comes out the uh, Broken Bow Indian offense led by quarterback Eli Coble. His offense averages 19 points per game. And a very heavy running attack, 34 yards through the air per contest, and 302 rushing yards per game. And here's Coble coming under center with three backs behind him, and it goes off to the right side and a good pickup of nine yards on first down for the leading ball carrier, Bryce Chaplin. He has 189 carries this season for 974 yards and 13 touchdowns. Yeah, their offense is very ground and pound. They're going to hit every gap. they got to dive in the A, the B. They'll run an outside veer. They'll run a toss. And if you're not in a gap and you don't fit that gap, they're going to hit it. It's second and one on the Wahoo 45, and the quarterback keeps it himself off to the right side and spins out of one tackle and falls forward for a broken bow first down up to their own 46-yard line. And there's where we see the other aspect of this offense of quarterback Eli Coble. That's his 105th carry this season. Now has 940 yards to his total and 12 touchdowns on the ground. He has only thrown the ball 36 times all season. That tells you how effective this run game is. Yeah, the Maryland eye, they got three dudes back there. And so when you run the option, you got a lead blocker. Plus, balls on the ground. Uh, it's loose. It's close to see who dove on top of it. It looks like Broken Bow fell back on top of it. Sorry to cut you off. That was no. that was crazy. And here we go, 5.52 to go here in this first quarter. It's second and 10 now for Broken Bow with the ball back on their own line of scrimmage. But continue trying to explain this offense, They dodged John. a bullet on that one. Um, but, yeah, you run a Maryland eye, you got three backs behind you. So you can run a dive back through whatever gap you want, and then you can pull it, and you've got a lead blocker for your pitch back on option. So – you got to be disciplined. you got to not get outflanked. Here's Coble under center. Gets the snap clean this time and keeps it off to the right side and falls forward across the 50 to the Warrior 49 and a half. Yeah. And a big third down here. Yeah, that's tough to defend because usually your defensive end is a guy who's going to take that dive back right away. And then the second guy, second guy's blocking for the quarterback. And a linebacker's got to get in there and get that quarterback. you got to have somebody run in the alley for pitch. So they've got really an extra blocker. Now, they don't have anybody on the perimeter, so we should have a corner there. We should have a safety there. We should have guys right there. So just keys to option football is to make sure you get your assignments right. Third and six for Broken Bow. Coble keeps it himself up the middle again and gets to the second level. He just went through everybody. All the Warriors were there, but he ran by, right by all of them and got to the Wahoo 41 for another Indian first down. Yeah, they run a midline right there where they, they give the dive, and then he pulls it, and he follows one of his lead blockers right up the hole, almost like a quarterback iso. And, I mean, you just got to jam those gaps up and, and just slow it down. 4.30 to go here in a first quarter, and likely a game that will go by pretty quickly with the way each of these two teams run the football. It's first and 10 broken bow on the Wahoo 41-yard line right hash. Here's quarterback Eli Coble under center again with one back behind him this time. Coble will pitch it out here to the near side, running there backwards and running out of room, breaking out of a tackle and down the sideline. That's a play Wahoo has to have. You have him wrapped up way in the backfield and taking it down the near sideline goes Screw Safranic 
for a gain, what should have been a loss of five, turns into a gain of four. Yeah, they had a good job stringing that out. They just didn't make the play at the at the point of attack there. And you got to go low on a, on a big running back, and arm tackles aren't going to do it in November in yeah. playoff football. That's Cruz. He has 141 carries now this season for 765 yards. He also has seven touchdowns, second and six for Broken Bull. And false it looks start. like a false start goes against the Indians. And that hurts. That moves him back five yards. First penalty of the night goes against Broken Bow and moves him back to the Warrior to the Warrior 42-yard line, second and 11. Great crowd here tonight for both teams. Wahoo, of course, here at home. But I'll tell you what, this Indian crowd traveled really well from a long ways away. Yeah, they've really had the their football program's really been going well the last two years. You know, Carly Wells jumped in there and. They've really rose and risen to a, a new level. I mean, their wrestling program is really good, but they've always been a pretty good football program here. A 7-3 and three record coming in as the 8 seed. Second and 11. It's a Ooh. pass, and it's he batted it. down, and he caught it. Now fights forward and gets driven back after he gets to the 40. Well, that he is his, his own 19th. Pass. Completion, I oh, guess. I was a lineman that caught that. Number 73 caught that. Oh, my. I thought the quarterback caught his own throw. Well, that was crazy. Well, it looked it like wild. that was Bryson Woodward, the center, was the one who actually caught the football and takes it for a gain of two yards. Yeah, it was batted down by our guy, <laughs> so it was a legal catch. It's like a six-man play. The center's eligible. Well, here's a big third and nine for Broken Bow on the Wahoo 40-yard line left hash. Coble under center with three backs behind him. Hands it off up the middle and diving forward to the Warrior 35-yard line was once again Bryce Chaplin. And now a huge fourth down here for Broken Bow. Fourth and four. They need to get to the Warrior 31 to keep the drive alive. Yeah, big play right here for really momentum for both teams. A stop here would be huge for the Warriors and crucial for Bow. Three minutes to go here in quarter number one. It's Wahoo six, Broken Bow zero. First drive of the game for the Indians. Fourth and four from the Warrior 40. Coble keeps it off to the right. He's not going to get go. there. Eli Shada over there throws him down along with Braylon Iverson. And the Warriors force a turnover on downs and get the football back with 2.46 to go in the first quarter. Great play by the front four right there, eating up gaps. And then the guy who's free may, has to make that play. And, of course, Braylon came in there, too. So, really, you had both levels coming at it. And what a huge play for, for Coach Iverson and the defense. Braylon Iverson gets the tackle right at the line of scrimmage. Eli Koble goes nowhere. And back comes out Jace Kaminsky and company for the Warrior offense. First and 10 from their own 34-yard line going left to right. With 2.46 to go here, first quarter, leading 6-0. to zero. Kaminsky, Noah gets the handoff off to the right side, trying to follow a blocker, and gets wrapped up around the ankles and then thrown backwards. Nice tackle made around the ankles by Kobe Wells, his 60th tackle of the season, and what we understand, a pretty sensational wrestler and now playing for his dad's football team. Yeah, Coach's kid, he's got two sons on the team, and they're pretty tough kids. Or they had a, a son that graduated that was a state champion wrestler, and I'm sure these two are going to be right there in Omaha when wrestling season comes to an end. 2.15 to go, first quarter. It's second and nine, Wahoo, from their own 35-yard line, and now the officials were having a conversation, maybe an equipment malfunction, as they were talking to Max Denson of the Broken Bow defensive line. So Kaminsky in the backfield. Noah stands to his right. Jace awaits the snap, has it, hands it off to Noah off to the left side, and he's thrown down in the backfield. Nice tackle made behind the line of scrimmage that time by Broken Bow's number 31, Aiden Markham. Aiden has his 32nd tackle this year, and it's third and very long for Wahoo. Third and 11 with 140 to go here first quarter, leading 6-0. to Yeah, Noah took kind of an awkward fall there. He very. had a weird, a guy wrapped him up, and he kind of got twisted up, so he's going to get looked at on the sideline. Kind of hobbled off the field there, so we got Kip now in the backfield. Looks like he's trying to walk it over there on the far side of the track, but yep. Kaminsky comes back into the huddle with Sam Edmonds and Avery Weeding. Haven't seen much of Caden Smart tonight. Shockingly, he was a big impact in game number one against SCOTUS last week. 
But here we go, 67 seconds to go, third and 10 for Wahoo, and I think they have to call a timeout. They were running out of time. I well, wish there were a play clock. That's too. a defensive timeout, actually. Oh, wow. They must have saw something that they weren't uh, quite sure about. So Broken Bow uses their first timeout. 106 to go here first quarter, and what's been a pretty fast first quarter, but third and 10 for Wahoo on their own 34-yard line. We'll keep it here on Wahoo Public YouTube and Saunders County Online, but John, you can kind of get a sense that this is going to be a physical game, and it's going to really come down to maybe a fourth quarter. Who's still standing? Yeah, who's going to who's going to get the ball last? I mean, you, your, your number of possessions is definitely going to be limited by time, and if you turn the ball over or you, you lose a possession – on an unforced error, you're giving the other team an advantage. So, you know, we got to get the running game going. This is kind of like the way the SCOTUS game started last week. Very slow. Yep. You know, kind of a six, six to seven, six or seven to nothing game at half or after the first quarter. And it just took a while for things to kind of get going. But when you're playing a physical team that's doing the exact same thing you do, you know, it's a battle of who's going to take the last punch, you know. I mean, it's a street fight out there. And we'll see as the game wears on who's going to impose their will. Here we go, big third down for both teams. A minute six to go first quarter. It's Wahoo six, Broken Bow zero. It's third and ten for Wahoo on their own 34-yard line. After forcing the turnover on downs, Kaminsky has it, rolls out to his left looking to throw. Now tucks it and runs down the sideline and gets about four yards. That's it before he's wrapped up on the far sideline by guess who? Bryce Chaplin again follows him. A gain of, they give him five, and he does stay in bounds, so... We might be close to running out this first quarter. But Wahoo will have to punt it away after getting the turnover on downs. The Warrior offense goes nowhere. Heck of a stand by the Indian defense. Yeah. Now let's hope we get a good punt here, get that field position game back in our favor. Warriors awaiting and letting some clock run. Good snap. Line drive punt left to right. Takes a bounce, and a broken bow bounce continues to roll up to the Indian 38-yard line. It took a bounce at the 35, rolled forwards three yards for the Indians, and that's where they will set up with 16 seconds to go and run at least one play here before the end of this first quarter. And back comes out this elite rushing attack that drove down the field but then got stopped on the Warrior 34-yard line. So if Warriors have maybe figured it out, and how much is it that first quarter just kind of feeling each other out a little yeah, bit? Yeah, I mean, everybody's going to be pounding it, trying to establish the running game, and if there was any dust, there'd be three yards and a cloud of it about every play. Coble hands it off to the back in the backfield, and Safranic goes nowhere. Back to the line of scrimmage. They give him a half yard up to the Wahoo Th or the Broken Bow 39-yard line, and that's the end of a fast first quarter. After 12 minutes of football, it's Wahoo 6, Broken Bow 0. You're tuned into Warrior Football in Saunders County Online and Wahoo Public, and we'll be back in 60 seconds. Stop at First Bank of Nebraska to get our new Wahoo Warrior branded debit card. Every transaction gives back to Wahoo Public Schools. All you need is a First Bank of Nebraska checking account and ask for the Warrior card. For more information, go to firstbanknne.com. First Bank of Nebraska, serving our communities, investing in you. Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. The best deal in town is at the Wahoo DQ. Our $7 meal deals run all day, every day. For only $7, you get your choice of an original cheeseburger or a three-piece chicken strip basket. Each option includes a regular order of fries, a medium drink, and a small sundae. Feeling hungrier? Upgrade that Sunday to a small blizzard for an extra $2. The Wahoo DQ is located at 1122 North Chestnut Street and open 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. Sunday through Thursday. And then on Fridays and Saturdays, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. And welcome back to Wahoo, Nebraska on Saunders County Online. Austin McNorton and John Herrera here with you on a beautiful Friday night from Wahoo, Nebraska. Start of quarter number two. It's second and nine for Broken Bow on their own 39-yard line going left to right. Wahoo leads it 6-0. to zero. Hand it up to the middle to Chaplin, who spins out of four tackles and gets a first down. Wahoo had him wrapped up but didn't finish the job, and he's got a first down to keep the chains moving. They put it right at the sticks. And there they move. Yeah, it's going to be the 
Designed for tonight. I mean, ugly football by design. Just pound it. Who can survive? Who can take the abuse? I mean, you're going to need depth up front. You're going to need guys. To, it's going to be a physical game, so you want to, you know, you don't want to get guys hurt, but you got to play physical. And this time of year, you just have to to stop an offense like this. First and ten, broken bow on their own 48-yard line. Handed off here to the right side into Warrior territory, up to the Warrior 48-yard line for a gain of four more and. There's not much going on, and it's quick, but that's four yards every time right yeah. now for Bryce Chaplin. That is. Another tackle there by Harry Kruger, and I see Noah's back on the field, which is a great sign. Um, he's back out there playing, yeah. so that's a good deal. So it's second and six for Broken Bow, now on the Wahoo 48-yard line right hash. Ball. Cobol, football's on the ground. It's still loose. I don't think anybody's – and he got back on top of it and then got thrown down by Noah. But they spot the football right at the line of scrimmage. So they say his forward momentum got stopped. And so it's no gain in third and six. It's the second time the football has been put on the grass now. Yeah, there's a big third down right here. Another chance for our defense to step up. Another opportunity for Broken Bow to try to make a play and continue the, the clock ticking, um, which is kind of their M.O., so let's see if we can get a stop here on third and six. 10.30 to go here, second quarter. Wahoo six, Broken Bow zero. Third and six for the Indians on the Wahoo 48. Mm. Quarterback keeper up the middle, bounces off of one, two tackles to the Warrior mm, about 43 and a half, which should be a yard shy of the first down. A gain of five that time on third down. It's fourth and one before several different Warriors were there to make the tackle. It looked like Braylon Iverson was the one who came out of the pile last, along with Sam Edmonds out of the secondary. Fourth and a long one with 9.58 to go. Big play again here, John. Yeah, this game's like Tech Mobile. Nobody's punting. So, I mean, it's fourth and two, which is a kind of a questionable, you know, you're on their side of the field, so what do you got to lose? Coble under center, awaits the snap, takes it, hands it right off to Chaplin, who falls forward for six yards. A broken bow first down as he put his head right into the chest of Noah Bordowski and just absolutely bullied him to the ground. First down Indians. Wow. That is a physical running back. Yeah, they just run to that open gap. I mean, if you've got, a, if you've got an open A gap, that really quick dive is going to get you two yards unless you pinch into that A gap. It's first and 10 broken bow now on the Wahoo 36-yard line. This is where their drive got stopped on their first attempt. Quarterback keeper, Ooh. oh, wow, he did actually end up handing it off and falling forward to the Wahoo 34-yard line on the carry was Chaplin again. Boy, I don't even know how that ball got into his hands. It happened so quick. Yeah, that mesh point got a little messed up because he ended up being spun around and his back was to the defense for a second. I think the quarterback was looking to pull, but the fullback yeah. wanted that rock. So, yeah, a little – Miscommunication there, but still a couple yards. 8.51 to go here, second quarter. Wahoo 6, Broken Bow 0. It's second and 8 for the Indians on the Wahoo 34-yard line right hash. Coble under center, hands it off to Safronic, and he falls forward for another big game before Jake Scanlon's finally the one to bring him down. After a gain of 8, it's third and 1. Now up to the Wahoo 27-yard line. Another little play there. I mean, they ran basically what looked like an ISO right, and then the third back, and you got three backs back there, took a step and came back across the line and hit a weak side gap. You know, got him about five yards. So here's another huge, I would say huge third down, but it's going to be a huge third and fourth if they stop yep. him there. 8-10 to go here. It's third and two for Broken Bow. Now on the Wahoo 28-yard line right hash. Coble under center, takes the snap. It's Chaplin again, and once again, all he has to do is fall forward, and he's going to get four yards every time. Every single time, and there's nothing Wahoo can do to stop it, as Braylon Iverson does make the tackle, but too late. It's another first down for the Indians. Yeah, they're running, their running game hits any gap. They can hit the dive in the ABC, and they can run option to the outside. So if they see that you're not lined up in a gap, they're probably checking to that, or everybody in the backfield knows that's the gap we're hitting. 7.40 to go now, and this clock that continues to run in this first half. Wahoo does lead 6-0, to zero, but now Broken Bow knocking on the door as they're on the Wahoo 23-yard line. Coble hands it off to Chaplin again. Edmonds hits him, but not before he gets inside of the Warrior 20 to about the 18-yard line, another gain of eight yards on first down. Jeez, this kid is so powerful. They gave him six officially up to the Warriors' 17-yard line. 
I it's mean, literally, he's taking about four steps and then just lowering his head and yeah. knocking over somebody. Yeah, he's just a bowling ball in there, and he's tough to tackle. Got to hit him low, and you got to you got to plug up the gaps with bodies. Second and four for Broken Bow. Cobol will hand it off again to Chaplin, who once again just falls forward to the Wahoo eleven, and another Indian first down. Now they're knocking on the door of the goal line, and Wahoo. They really probably nervous about that missed extra point now. Yeah, time for Coach Iverson's defense to step it up here. Pinch gaps, you know, get your bodies in there. You got to fill, and if you're on the back half, you better be ready for play action in case they decide to slip out a tight end. Coble to Chaplin. He fights forward. The shorter gain for him this time as he takes it for about two yards before Wahoo's Jake Scanlon wraps him up. A gain of... About two and a half that time, 6.23 to go here in quarter number two. It's a 6-0 to zero Warrior lead, and believe it or not, this is only the fourth drive of the game, viewers. <laughs> it's been Yeah, it's tough. I mean, they defended that pretty well, and the kids still fell forward for about two and a half yards, yep. so it's, it's a tough offense to defend. Chaplin came in tonight with 966 yards, and they're just these chunk plays like this. This time it's handed off to Safronic, and finally go. the Warriors are there to hit him at the line of scrimmage. Bordowski was there along with Caden Smart and once again Jake Scanlon. He's the one who's been reading it the best for Wahoo. A gain of one, it's third and seven from the Warrior eight yard line with 540 to go here in the second quarter. Yeah, they can still get a first down technically, but yes. really this is huge because they're more of a three, four yard type of team. If you, can, if you can get a stop here, then it's advantage just knowing that you got a better chance of stopping them when it's third and seven than when it's third and two. Coble under center with three backs behind him. Chaplin gets it off to the left side. Go. He's hit and brought down at the five of gain of two as Josh Edmonds and Barrett LaValle were there for the Warriors stop. And now... Yeah, what are the odds they get I know. This? It's Zero. fourth and four. They need to get to the one... And they're on the Warrior 5. So all the crowd now making some noise here for Wahoo with 4.55 to go here in the second quarter. Wahoo leading it 6-0. to zero. This is a massive play here so far in this game. Fourth and five from the Warrior 6. Coble under center, takes the snap. Chaplin gets it up the middle, fighting for it. He will be close, really close. I think the Warriors got him short. Nice. Wahoo makes the stop right just shy of the goal line. What a long drive for Broken Bow that results in no points. That second down play was huge because we stuffed him at the line. Otherwise, they'd have got there two or three each time and they'd have been right there, but stopped him right in front of the sticks. But now, John, <laughs> the Warrior offense kind of in a precarious situation a little bit here. Now it's time for our, our version of that offense. Let's pound it out. Let's get out of our shadow. No mistakes. 4.38 to go here in quarter number two. It's Wahoo six, Broken Bow zero, and it's first and 10 Wahoo from their own two yard line. In between the hashes, Kaminsky stands in his own end zone awaiting the snap. Kip Brigham will get the handoff and he fights forward to the Warriors six for a nice gain of four yards on Kip Brigham's first carry of the night. His 57th carry this season. 355 yards for him on the ground and six touchdowns this year. Yeah, in a physical game tonight, having that second guy, Kip, last week Kip, Kip's role was a little more limited. He didn't make as many plays, but on a game like tonight, you need both those guys yeah, fresh legs. It's absolutely. It's going to be a tough night. Especially with an offense and broken bow. They have three different guys who can all carry it very effectively. So Wahoo would love to be able to do the same as the clock runs. Four minutes exactly as Wahoo has it second and six on their own six. Kaminsky empty, Brickham comes across the formation, Kaminsky will keep it, rolling to his left, throwing it deep and too far as down the sideline Barrett LaValle had a step on the Indian secondary, but now it's third and six for Wahoo as the clock stops with 3.50 to go. Yeah, he got behind the coverage, he'd still be running if that ball was just a little bit, little bit less heat on it, but uh, taking a shot right here. But now it comes to a huge third down and right now, a first down seems massive for Wahoo to oh, not have huge. to punt it from your own end zone. It'd be huge. And from a field position standpoint, because if we punted it, you know, they'd have it at midfield. And then it's right back 
to their advantage. 3.50 to go here, second quarter. Wahoo six, Broken Bow zero. It's third and six for Wahoo from their own six. Handed off here to the near side. Hold for Sam Edmonds who slips and falls. He falls at the nine after a gain of three and looked like he could have had the first down if he keeps his footing. But now the Warriors will have to punt it away from their own end zone. Yeah, big punt right here. Good snap. Let's get a good kickoff, and let's get some coverage down there, and we're right back to playing defense. We'll be at halftime before you know it. <laughs> As the clock hits 320, but an important punt here for sure for the Warriors as Caden Christian stands in his own end zone. Snap right at his chest. He gets it away. Good punt, and it's fielded on his knees at the Warrior 47-yard line by the quarterback. You don't usually see the quarterback catching punts, but Eli Coble yeah. caught the punt on his knees, and here we go. Big, good field position here for Broken Bows. They start on the Warrior 47-yard line with 3.03 to go, and of note, Broken Bow gets the football to start the third quarter. Yeah. Yeah, this is turning into a real battle right here, a battle of possessions, and uh, that's a huge one right here to go into the half with the lead. So Eli Koble comes under center with a three-pack standing directly behind him. Koble will hand it off to Safronic, and he fights forward to the Warrior 45-yard line, a gain of two. And it's second and eight. And it feels like, John, you talked about it, and it's what ended that last drive. It seems like second down is going to be the biggest down of every drive for these Indians. Yeah, just, I mean, right there they got two or three, something like that, a couple yards. If they can get another two, three, four, then that gives them that easy decision on third and down. fourth down. Yep, yeah, that if makes we can it. stock them here, that, that two-play third and fourth down is tougher. Two and a half minutes to go, second quarter, handoff. They both it have it, and wrapped up immediately is Bryce Chaplin. It looked like Eli Coble wanted to pull it, but Bryce said, no, I want it. Yeah. And so they both are holding the football and go down together. Yeah, I don't know one who guy, you give the official carry to. I mean. Yeah, one guy can really take on that mesh. And a lot of times if your end hits there quick and gets that mesh, then they don't they don't know who to give the ball to because they're afraid it's going to fumble, so it ends up being a scrum. Yeah, Our ends are doing that's a good the best job. way to describe what that just was. Yeah, coming down on that fullback is huge in the option game. 153 to go here, second quarter. Huge third and seven for Broken Bow on the Wahoo 44-yard line. Koble hands it off to Pass. fakes the handoff. Now throws it. Oh, it's oh. nearly picked. Oh. Dropping the interception for Wahoo was Sam Edmonds. He had it. Him and Braylon Iverson were both there. For a moment. Oh. That kid was open for a moment, and then Sam just broke on it. And he he might have housed that thing if he'd have caught it because he was on a run, and there was one kid that could have stopped him. He has four interceptions this season, but... Boy, he would have loved to have had five. But a huge stop nonetheless. Absolutely. Assuming they don't fake this punt. It's fourth and seven for Broken Bow. Again on the Warrior 44-yard line. 142 to go here. Wahoo is kind of playing safe, preparing for a fake potentially. Low snap. They do punt it straight up into the air. It'll go to the far sideline and bounce inside of the Warrior 20, continuing to roll all the way inside of the 15 and down at the 14-yard line. It could punt. And again, the field position battle continues with 91. Yes, you heard it right. 91 seconds to go here in this first half. Yeah, now it's a little bit of a chess match because uh, Broken Bow's got two timeouts. If they can get a stop here, will they use those timeouts to try to get the ball back, make us punt it back to them before half? If we can get any kind of yardage on this drive right here, then the half will be over and we'll go in. It's first and 10 Warriors with the ball on their own 14-yard line with a minute 31 to go, right hash. Kaminsky is empty in the gun, takes the snap, throws it out here to the near side, low. Caught on the run by Sam Edmonds down the sideline, and he's hit out of bounds after a good gain for Wahoo. A nice tackle made here on the near sideline by number 12, Coy Warden. But a good pickup that time of eight for Sam Edmonds, and he does stop the clock as his Head went out of bounds, 124 to go here. Just so much for running the ball. Looks like Coach Fox is going to be a little bit aggressive here and see if he can take a shot. Wahoo also has all three timeouts. As Kaminsky's in the backfield, Noah moves to his right. As long So does Caden Smart over to that right side of the line. And now Caden moves back to the left. 
Kaminsky takes the snap, fakes it, looking to throw, has time, deep downfield, mm. and just over the reach of the diving wide receiver across the middle. Caden Smart was actually the target on that pass attempt for Wahoo. Caden only has six catches all year, but he was the lead target that time. But do you like taking the shot there on third and that's, two? That's interesting, yeah. I mean, we got a minute 18, and they still have their two timeouts. So hopefully we can uh, get this first down right here and uh, maybe take another shot. I see they're, they're rolling out in trips again. Third and two for Wahoo on their own 22-yard line left hash. Kaminsky emptying the gun. He'll throw it out to the flat on the screen to Sam Markson. Markson gets a good block down the Here far sideline and gets out of bounds at the Warrior 36-yard line for a first down. Great blocking on that outside by Josh Edmonds over there. Yeah, I mean, and they must be seeing a look that they like out of trips because they've hit that trips a couple times. And, you know, if... If the, if the guy on the third receiver is playing way off, you chuck it out there and let him make a play. Get to the sideline. I mean, hardly any time has ran off. And now we got a first down. First and 10 Wahoo on their own 36-yard line. Right hash, a minute 10 to go here, first half. Warriors lead it 6-0. to zero. Kaminsky in the backfield, play action. Has time, steps up in the pocket, oh. throws it deep. Wide open, it's yeah. count at the 10, oh. 5, touchdown, Warriors! Josh Edmonds, a big Warrior touchdown! That is huge. He was three yards behind that corner, and... Jace just dropped it in the bucket out there. It was a beautiful throw. Great protection by the Hogs up front. Let it fly. It was beautiful. A 64-yard touchdown pass from Jace Kaminsky to Josh Edmonds. He had a step on every Broken Bow secondary player and walked into the end zone untouched. How about that speed for Josh Edmonds? He's had two great catches tonight, two touchdowns, and the Warriors lead 12 to zero, and now we'll go for the two-point conversion. It's the Wildcat play, Bordowski fighting to the Ooh. goal line. They say he's short. So Wahoo killing themselves on point afters, but they lead it 12 to zero with a minute left. We'll That's, keep it here, because only a minute left. What a play for the was, Warriors. Whoa, just what the doctor ordered. A, a nice, comfortable, now you gotta, you gotta score two touchdowns now to get this game back in it. And, that's huge because they're going to get the ball, like you said, coming out of half. And just to just to let those guys up front on their defense know, hey, we're not just going to run it too. We can get over the top. So you better not be filling too quick safeties and corners because you'll have a guy run right by you and our quarterback can drop it in the, in the bucket, like I said. That is Jace Kaminsky's 15th touchdown through the air this season. And the third for Josh Edmonds, who came into to tonight with only eight receptions and a touchdown. Tonight, he has two catches for two touchdowns to give the Warriors a 12-0 lead here in the playoffs. What does that say about a player, John, to say, you know, Barrett and Sam have both had in sensational years. He's kind of been the third guy all year long. And to have a game like this in the playoffs, what does yeah. that mean? It's, you know, don't count your reps. Make your reps count. You know, like when it's time for you to step up and that ball's in the air, go get that thing. And it doesn't matter what you've done the last five or six games. If, if that play is there to be made, go get it because it's next man up and there's athletes everywhere on that team. So one minute exactly remains here in the second quarter. Again, Broken Bow will get the football to start quarter number three. So we'll see how aggressive the Indian offense will be on their side of things as they still have three timeouts. Good kick. It'll bounce at the 20 and taken here to the near side with a big hole down the sideline and a touchdown saving tackle made for Wahoo here on the near sideline. It was made by Avery Weeding at the Broken Bow 45 yard line, but now the Indians in great field position yeah. here with 54 seconds. Yeah, a little bit of a breakdown. Some guys got out of their lanes there, but um, obviously Wahoo's committed to special teams. I looked down that line and all those guys are top starter type guys. You know, some teams will throw some sophomore. Well, we got a lot of sophomores, but some teams will throw some JV guys out there to give their older guys a rest. We put our dudes on that because you don't want to give up a special team's yard line right hash. Coble's under center. He keeps the handoff himself and is hit immediately. Once again, there for Wahoo is number 53, Jake Scanlon, who has been a beast on the front line for the Warriors here in this first half. Flowing locks of Jake Scanlon. I mean, he has got mullet power going tonight, and he is just a force up front. I mean, he is so tough to block. He's such an aggressive guy, got a motor, and he just, he just gets a hold of you, and it's 
you know, he's going to bring you down, and he's going to eat blocks up. Clock goes to 22 seconds. Broken Bow not in a huge hurry as Koble comes under center. He hands it off here to the right side to Safranik, who breaks a tackle before he's thrown down by Braylon Iverson at the Wahoo 44-yard line, which is a yard shy, I believe, of the first down. Yep, they don't give him the first down. And now Broken Bow calls a timeout with one second left on the clock. It's a 12-0 Warrior lead, a timeout taken by Broken Bow with one second left. Wahoo 12 Broken Bow zero. It's third and one from the Warrior 46-yard line, but you're likely saying Broken Bow's trying to go to the house here on this one. Yeah, interesting call there because they had like nine or ten seconds when right. that play ended, and they let it run down thinking, well, let's just go to the locker room, but then they decided at the last minute to call a timeout. Looks like they got five seconds back, but they have no choice now but to go for the house because they can't get a first down and call another timeout even though they have one, they got to go for the whole thing, and they're, what, 45 yards away. So we need a pass rush, and our guys on the back half are probably going to get some action right now. And Eli Koble, he has thrown four touchdowns this season. He's completed 36 passes, or no, he's completed 19 passes, I should say. Four touchdowns, three interceptions. It's Third and one for Broken Bow on the Warrior 45-yard line with five seconds to go. Koble is under center, looking to throw. He steps back about six yards. It's a screen into the middle and tackled at the Warrior 35-yard uh, line was once again Jake Scanlon making the tackle. He's everywhere in the Warriors' lead after one of the fastest first halves of high school football you'll ever experience. How about that one, John? 45 minutes. It's literally gonna. It literally could be an hour and a half football game. It's unbelievable. Wahoo goes into the halftime locker room with a 12 to zero lead, thanks to two touchdown receptions from Josh Edmonds. You're tuned in to Wahoo Warrior Football on Saunders County Online and Wahoo Public YouTube. As we will go ahead and thank all of our sponsors and come back and get you set for quarter number three. Don't go anywhere. Wahoo State Bank gives you the home team advantage. From the beginning of your financial experience with Penny Partners, Kids Club with Richie Rover, to student checking for those age 15 through 25, offering a variety of benefits that make banking easy when you're home or away, or if you're looking to finance the future home. Wahoo State Bank has the home team to work with you through life. Member FDIC. Rivalry Apparel in Wahoo is excited to celebrate their 5th anniversary the month of October. Stop in to say hi to the Rivalry team or go to RivalryApparel.com now to get your gear for fall sports. Then be on the lookout for winter sports apparel for your favorite local teams and schools. Rivalry is open Tuesdays, Thursdays 10 to 6, Wednesdays, Fridays 10 to 5, Saturdays 9 to noon. Call 402-870-0780 for any questions. The team at Rivalry Apparel wants to help you have a winning season. We are your biggest fan. Rivalry Apparel in Wahoo. South Haven Living Center in Wahoo is a proud sponsor of this broadcast. Recognized as a great place to work, the folks at South Haven know the importance of teamwork and the reward that comes from serving older adults. If you're looking for senior care or a rewarding career with a Nebraska-based company, give them a call or check them out online. Southhaven-wahoo.com South Haven You're looking for a new career? Dollar General is looking for you. Hiring all positions and all shifts, they are looking for you with a starting pay up to $22 an hour with a $2,000 sign-on bonus. You can find details by going to dollargeneral.com slash careers or by texting DG Warehouse to 25000 Must be 18 or older, but again, starting pay up to $22 an hour with a $2,000 sign-on bonus. Contact them now, dollargeneral.com slash careers. At Medicine Man Pharmacy, we aspire to be the pharmacy provider confidently chosen by our clients for their family's everyday health needs because of our expertise, integrity, and honestly consistently exceeding their expectations. Reliability, bright spot, value, integrity, community building, and so much more can be found at Medicine Man Pharmacy of Wahoo. 
Hot Oil and Propane is continuing to be family-run and owned for 60 years. OOP Inc. is your Wahoo supplier for gas, diesel, propane, oil, grease, and products for your yard and acreage, including seed, fertilizer, and sprays to help keep your lawn and pastures beautiful. Find them online at OOPIncWahoo.com, call 402-443-3563, or stop by 3288 Ponderosa Drive. OOP Inc. serving for 60 years, thanks to you. Stop at First Bank of Nebraska to get our new Wahoo Warrior branded debit card. Every transaction gives back to Wahoo Public Schools. All you need is a First Bank of Nebraska checking account and ask for the Warrior card. For more information, go to firstbanknne.com. First Bank of Nebraska, serving our communities, investing in you. Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. The best deal in town is at the Wahoo DQ. Our $7 meal deals run all day, every day. For only $7, you get your choice of an original cheeseburger or a three-piece chicken strip basket. Each option includes a regular order of fries, a medium drink, and a small sundae. Feeling hungrier? Upgrade that Sunday to a small blizzard for an extra $2. The Wahoo DQ is located at 1122 North Chestnut Street and open 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. Sunday through Thursday. And then on Fridays and Saturdays, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. Anchor insurance agencies want to remind you open enrollment is right now for policies beginning January 1st. We're your local agency with locations across Nebraska, including Wahoo, Grand Island, Omaha, Lincoln, and Fort Calhoun. If your employer doesn't offer affordable insurance, please let us help you get the coverage you deserve at an affordable price. And if you're over 65, there are so many new update options out there and we're up to speed on all of them. Let us help you navigate what works best for you. Voted Omaha Magazine's Best of Omaha. Call us at 402 858 or scan the QR code to provide your basic information. Anchor Insurance Agency's Wahoo State Bank gives you the home team advantage. From the beginning of your financial experience with Penny Partners, Kids Club with Richie Rover, to student checking for those age 15 through 25, offering a variety of benefits that make banking easy when you're home or away, or if you're looking to finance the future home. Wahoo State Bank has the home team to work with you through life. Member FDIC. Excited to celebrate their fifth anniversary the month of October. Stop in to say hi to the Rivalry team or go to RivalryApparel.com now to get your gear for fall sports. Then be on the lookout for winter sports apparel for your favorite local teams and schools. Rivalry is open Tuesdays, Thursdays 10 to 6, Wednesdays, Fridays 10 to 5, Saturdays 9 to noon. Call 402-870-0780 for any questions. The team at Rivalry Apparel wants to help you have a winning season. We are your biggest fan. Rivalry Apparel in Wahoo is a proud sponsor of this broadcast. Recognized as a great place to work, the folks at South Haven know the importance of teamwork and the reward that comes from serving older adults. If you're looking for senior care or a rewarding career with a Nebraska-based company, give them a call or check them out online, southhaven-wahoo.com. If you're looking for a new career, Dollar General is looking for you. Hiring all positions and all shifts, they are looking for you with a starting pay up to $22 an hour with a $2,000 sign-on bonus. You can find details by going to dollargeneral.com slash careers or by texting DG Warehouse to 25000 Must be 18 or older, but again, starting pay up to $22 an hour with a $2,000 sign-on bonus. Contact them now, dollargeneral.com slash careers. And welcome back to Wahoo, Nebraska here on Saunders County Online and Wahoo Public YouTube channel. Austin McNorton and John Herrera here with you now for the Saunders County Online halftime show. It's Wahoo 12, Broken Bow 0 in a first half that took 45 minutes of real time. That's just crazy. And the Warriors lead 12-0. to 0. And, John, your thoughts on the first half there, my friend? It was, yeah, it was just leaning on people. I mean, it was two heavyweights just punching each other in the face. Um, we got the big play there at the end of the second quarter, the bomb to Josh, and that's huge because it's a two-score lead now. Um, in a game like this, that's huge. I mean, because Broken Bow's getting the ball coming out, and yeah. so to get a stop would be really big for the total outcome just by the time that's going to take to for them to get going and for us to get going. I mean, the third quarter is going to disappear, and if, if we can come out – and find a way to put points on the board after getting a stop, 
that's monumental to a game like this because if you get, I mean, our PATs haven't been real great tonight, so we're 12 to nothing. If it's 18 to nothing, that's a three touchdown deal. So they've got to get down there. They've got to score a touchdown. It doesn't look like anybody wants to kick the ball anywhere tonight other than punts. So, <laughs> right. um, so it's, it's one of them games where you got to get six. And if you can get six, if we can get, if we can stop them and get our own six, that's huge because every possession is so physical and so tough. And their offense is just churning. I mean, A gap dives, A gap dives, midline, quarterback following the fullback. It's just they're not afraid to just stay to the plan and really just grind it out. And a look at what else is going on around Class C1. Again, Broken Bow got here by defeating D.C. West last week, 28-20 to in the 8-9 seed. So this is your Wahoo Warriors number one, leading number eight, 12-0. Pierce and Sydney, that's the 4-5 seed. That already happened today, right, John? That happened at 4 o'clock this afternoon in Sydney. So Pierce had to take the drive because technically – that's you would say that's not an upset, but I think a lot of people felt Pierce could get that game. Right, Sydney forty-one to thirty-four. <laughs> High that's scoring impressive. game. So Sydney awaits the winner of this one. So shout out to all the Sydney fans who are watching right now and <laughs> seeing who they're going to be playing and where they're going to be traveling uh, or hosting next Friday night. Kind of a big game there. So we also had the three-six Ashland Greenwood. They defeated uh, Shatteron fifty-three to fourteen, and Adam Central they defeated Aurora nine to seven. So those two teams squaring off right now. Yeah, it looks like Ashland's kind of in control. The, the it says it's in the first quarter, but seventeen to nothing. But I got to imagine that's probably at about halftime by now, but Ashland seems to be in control there. And then finally, it is number seven Auburn who defeated Ogallala 36 to 32 last week, traveling to number two Boone Central who defeated Columbus Lakeview 49 to seven. And that game started at six o'clock, correct? And starting to get it's, pretty wrapped up. It's getting out of control. It's 56 to seven out there on the turf in Albion. And Boone is one of those teams, big physical team. Um, they, this Broken Bow team had a pretty tough go with them on game one this year. Yes. But um, Boone is a big physical team, and they had a battle with D.C. West a few weeks ago. But uh, they must be getting it going because it's 56-7, to and it just ended the third quarter, and that's a running clock, and that game will be over in 12 minutes. So, yeah, so it likely looks that uh, Sydney and at least Boone Central, so the four seed and the two seed so far, are moving on, and they're just waiting on what happens in Saunders County tonight right. for the Wahoo Warriors yep. and the Ashland Greenwood Blue Jays. And, John, what are your keys to the second half? Let's start first with Broken Bow to try and pull off an upset here on the road tonight. Yeah, I think at times they're tough to stop, really tough to stop because – We've said it a couple times, that second down is key. First down, a couple yards. Falling forward, hit a gap. Second second down is where we've made some hay. We've stopped them for no gain or maybe one yard, which puts them off schedule for that three yards in a cloud of dust. So they can get three or four yards on a third down, and then if it's fourth and three or four, they got a decision to make. And if they're not in plus territory, they're going to have to punt it because they don't want to give it to us in good field, pool, field, goal, uh, field position. So when they're on their side of the field, they're not afraid to run four downs, and they can get 10 yards and four downs, assuming Wahoo doesn't wreck a couple of their plays or they commit a penalty. They've had some mesh troubles with the fullback quarterback to where there's a little miscommunication or our end is right on the mesh so quick right. that they really can't, and the quarterback's afraid to give it. Fullback is not sure if he's taking it or not, so they both just kind of go down with the ball. So if we can continue to make those huge second down stops, first and second down stops, then they're off schedule, and that's advantage Wahoo. And for the Warriors, you talked about it, kind of some keys for Wahoo to hold on to this lead because it's going to be a fast oh. second half, and you have the lead right now, but it's not going to be easy. No, it's going to be it's going to be a difficult lead to hold because you know Bo's going to come out fired up. They're going to want to have one just really downhill possession, so we got to really take advantage. If we can get a stop and then we can churn some clock, it's yep. advantage Wahoo. And if we can if we can get a store a scoring drive going, that's huge. Even if they score and we answer, that still is huge because if even if you're playing 50-50 ball, you're starting with a 12 lead, 12. Uh, I just about said 12 run lead. Wrong sport. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, uh, if you still got that 12 point lead, the more you carry deeper in the game, the tougher it is to come back. 
And it, it's just a battle of wills tonight. I really think it is. We'll see what our we'll see what all those young sophomores are made out of. I mean, by now they're basically juniors, but they've made plays all year, and it's time to just buckle down and hope your chin strap's on tight because it's going to be a physical second half. And John, how much does Wahoo there on that last drive before this before the third quarter began of just getting those kind of wide receivers involved, a, pa a screen pass to Sam Edmonds, a screen to Sam Markson, and then, of course, the big play, Josh Edmonds, who has two catches across the middle. How much does that kind of loosen up the Indian defense maybe a little bit and can create some big holes for the run game? Yeah, I mean, when they started coming out in trips and chucking it around, that's going to widen their linebackers. I mean, when those, when those gaps are, are fat like that, boy, you can really get running on those – three receiver sets because who's covering the third receiver you're telling me that a linebacker is going to cover one of the Edmonds boys or Landon Fye or somebody like that that's a tough matchup yeah. so if they can keep doing those little quick passes get their yardage it, really that's a that's almost a three yards and a cloud of dust passing game because it's a it's a pretty high percentage pass for Jace you get your blockers on the perimeter and I trust that guy to make one dude miss and if we make blocks off we go well, the third quarter, as both teams have now come out of the locker room, is shortly upon us. It's Wahoo 12 and Broken Bow 0 as you're tuned into Wahoo Warrior Football in Saunders County Online and Wahoo Public YouTube. And we'll be back after we thank our sponsors. At Medicine Man Pharmacy, we aspire to be the pharmacy provider confidently chosen by our clients for their family's everyday health needs because of our expertise, integrity, and honestly consistently exceeding their expectations. Reliability, bright spot, value, integrity, community building, and so much more can be found at Medicine Man Pharmacy of Wahoo. Hot Oil and Propane is continuing to be family-run and owned for 60 years. OOP Inc. is your Wahoo supplier for gas, diesel, propane, oil, grease, and products for your yard and acreage, including seed, fertilizer, and sprays to help keep your lawn and pastures beautiful. Find them online at OOPIncWahoo.com, call 402-443-3563, or stop by 3288 Ponderosa Drive. OOP Inc. serving for 60 years, thanks to you. Stop at First Bank of Nebraska to get our new Wahoo Warrior branded debit card. Every transaction gives back to Wahoo Public Schools. All you need is a First Bank of Nebraska checking account and ask for the Warrior card. For more information, go to firstbanknne.com. First Bank of Nebraska, serving our communities, investing in you. Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. The best deal in town is at the Wahoo DQ. Our $7 meal deals run all day, every day. For only $7, you get your choice of an original cheeseburger or a three-piece chicken strip basket. Each option includes a regular order of fries, a medium drink, and a small sundae. Feeling hungrier? Upgrade that sundae to a small blizzard for an extra $2. The Wahoo DQ is located at 1122 North Chestnut Street and open 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. Sunday through Thursday. Thursday, and then on Fridays and Saturdays, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. Mind you, open enrollment is right now for policies beginning January 1st. We're your local agency with locations across Nebraska, including Wahoo, Grand Island, Omaha, Lincoln, and Fort Calhoun. If your employer doesn't offer affordable insurance, please let us help you get the coverage you deserve at an affordable price. And if you're over 65, there are so many new update options out there, and we're up to speed on all of them. Let us help you navigate what works best for you. Voted Omaha Magazine's Best of Omaha. Call us at 402-858-0557 or scan the QR code to provide your basic information. Anchor Insurance Agency State Bank gives you the home team advantage. From the beginning of your financial experience with Penny Partners, Kids Club with Richie Rover, to student checking for those age 15 through 25, offering a variety of benefits that make banking easy when you're home or away, or if you're looking to finance the future home. Wahoo State Bank has the home team to work with you through life. Member FDIC.
is excited to celebrate their fifth anniversary the month of October. Stop in to say hi to the Rivalry team or go to RivalryApparel.com now to get your gear for fall sports. Then be on the lookout for winter sports apparel for your favorite local teams and schools. Rivalry is open Tuesdays, Thursdays 10 to 6, Wednesdays, Fridays 10 to 5, Saturdays 9 to noon. Call 402-870-0780 for any questions. The team at Rivalry Apparel wants to help you have a winning season. We are your biggest fan. And welcome back to Wahoo, Nebraska on Saunders County Online and Wahoo Public YouTube. There, awesome McNorton and John Herrera here with you as we're one minute away from the start of quarter number three, but we have some members of the dance team here with us, John. That's right. We got the we got three leaders on the Warrior Sapphires up here. And they, they dance at every halftime show. You may see parts of it on the stream. But we have two seniors here. We have Hannah Herrera. We have Addie Scott. And our broadcast partner, Addie Learman, is up here, of course. We have, she's a sophomore, Hannah Elliott, sophomore, Gracie Peterson, Tinley Watts, sophomores, Jenna Kreifels, Hayden Filmeyer, and Elana Kleffner bring it up with the freshmen. And girls, how do you feel about tonight's game? How's the surface out there? Um, I thought it was great, great weather out there. We dance good. Boys are winning. It's a good night. That's right. Addie, how's the dance team been going so far? Uh, we're doing really good. We just got some um, state jazz choreography, state palms coming up. We're getting ready for the season. Be sure to go uh, Grand Island in February. Addie Learman, how do you feel about the team's prospects this year at state in Grand Island? I feel like we got a really good dance. We have a really great choreographer, and you all just have to wait to see how it turns out. The Wahoo Saf Warrior Sapphire is coached by Megan Risen. Bringing it. Risen? Yeah. Riz? Yeah. Okay. Sure. That's right. <laughs> She's risen. Okay, so it's fun to watch these girls come to basketball games. They'll be dancing at halftime, every football game at halftime. Hopefully we have two more games to dance at this season, semifinals and possibly a trip to Lincoln. So, girls, thanks for coming up, and good luck the rest of the way. Thank, Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much to the Warrior Sapphires. And here we go. First job, play of quarter number three. It's first and ten for Broken Bow back on their own 25-yard line and taking it forward to the far sideline over for a gain of about mm, three yards. Clock runs 1140. On the far sideline was the quarterback, Eli Coble, on the first carry of quarter number three. And... Here we go. This is the deepest that Broken Bow has started in terms of field position. And now it's second and seven after a gain of three. And we'll see if the Warrior defense has made some adjustments to this elite running attack of the Indians. Coble under center has it, hands it off to a new back with the carry that time. It's number 31, Aiden Markham. That's his first carry, and they throw a flag late as well, and that makes the Indian fans happy. Looked like a late hit against Wahoo as Markham kind of fell to the ground awkwardly and a Warrior dove in late, which should give the Indians a big first down and move the, four, the football towards midfield. Yeah, that's really a field position. Unforced error right there. We don't want penalties, right, Addy? That's no fun. No, penalties are not good for our team. They're not the strat. We want to we wanna be good tackles. We don't want to make unforced errors. Plus, it gets them kind of out of the shadow of their yep. out of the shadow of their end zone. We had a good field position thing going, and now we got to kind of start Gosh. over. First and ten, pretty much at midfield right here. Moves the ball all the way up to the Broken Bow 49-yard line. That is Wahoo's 48th penalty this season. Now 356 yards of penalties here today. Coble keeps it himself off to the right side. Now cuts it up to the middle on the option play and tackled right at midfield was Coy Warden. His 21st carry this season, and now we're seeing some new backs get some carries here for Broken Bull in the start of the third quarter. Yeah, fresh legs. I mean, they come out and they just keep throwing guys at you. I mean, number seven's out there, and he keeps working the ball. Right. But, you know, fresh legs coming out of half. You get those guys that played in the first half, a little bit of a break, and then you get them coming back. It's Wahoo 12, Broken Bow 0. With 10.33 to go here in the third quarter. Second and eight for Broken Bow on the Warrior 49-yard line. Ball goes up the middle, and look at that pile push. The Warriors can't stop Broken Bow from moving the pile forward. He was hit about two yards past the line of scrimmage and pushed the pile forward for another six yards all the way up to the Warrior 43-yard line, and it's third and a long two with 10-10 to go. That's a tough run right there by, by seven. Chaplin, he is just... 
He's carrying guys. He hits that Literally. gap hard, and he puts his helmet down, and he's a tough dude to tackle. And when he gets ahead of steam, you're, you're going to lean forward like he has been and get three, four yards. He carried about seven guys with him. It's third and two from the Warrior 43-yard line. Broken bow in between the hashes. Coble lost the football on the ground, picked it back up, and got thrown down. The third time tonight that Eli Coble has not handled the snap correctly, and that is a big play because now it's fourth down for the Indians in kind of a situation where you probably have to go for it because of the deficit, but this won't yeah. be easy. And, and they've gotten three yards most of the time, but unforced errors. And I think our defensive line is stemming around. They're moving before the snap, and maybe that's throwing their center quarterback exchange off just a tad. A loss of one. It's fourth and two and a half. Coble in the backfield. Oh, stands under center now. Has the handoff clean to Chaplin, and go. he's hit immediately. I think Wahoo got the stop just shy of the sticks. A big play for the Warrior defense to start the third quarter. Wow. Huge play by Braylon there, wrapping around. As soon as he saw the down block and he saw Jake hit that fullback, quarterback pulls it, and Braylon was right there. Bryce That's Chaplin. a huge play. Yeah, Braylon read him. That's the second time tonight that Braylon Iverson has made a tackle on fourth down. And, boy, that's huge for Wahoo. You talked about it's that huge. at halftime, John. It is huge because, you know, we, we they had the, the exchange there where it was an issue, so that was basically a no gain. So, once again, we got ahead of the sticks, and they yep. had an opportunity to get a first down, and Braylon stuffed it. First and 10 for Wahoo. Now with the ball in their own 42-yard line left hash. Kaminsky throws it out to the flat. Caught by Harrison Krieger. He falls a block for a gain of 10 for Wahoo and a first down. And you had Avery Weeding driving a corner that about, was Kip 15, Brigham, sorry. Go about ahead. 15 yards downfield, tipping a guy over for some for some pancake right there. But, yeah, they're, they're seeing something out of that trip set. They're seeing an alignment. Maybe it's a, maybe it's a Jimmy's and Joe's thing. We got a guy that could beat this guy. And all it takes is one good move and good blocking, and here we go, first down. That was Kip Brigham's seventh catch of the year for 10 yards, 8.30 to go here in the third quarter. And now the clock stops as Wahoo takes a timeout. 8.32 to go here in quarter number three. It's Wahoo 12, Broken Bow 0, first and 10 Warriors from the Indian 48-yard line when we come back in 30 seconds. At Medicine Man Pharmacy, we aspire to be the pharmacy provider confidently chosen by our clients for their family's everyday health needs because of our expertise, integrity, and honestly consistently exceeding their expectations. Reliability, bright spot, value, integrity, community building, and so much more can be found at Medicine Man Pharmacy of Wahoo. And welcome back to Wahoo, Nebraska on Saunders County Online and Wahoo Public YouTube. 8.32 to go here in quarter number three. It's Wahoo 12, Broken Bow 0. Wahoo uses their first of three timeouts here in the second half as they have it. First and 10 on the Broken Bow 48-yard line after getting the turnover on downs. Now Wahoo trying to run some clock and keep the score going as Kip Brigham Makes the catch for 10 yards, and now Bordowski stands to Kaminsky to his left in the gun. Noah gets the handoff, cuts it up the middle, trying to push the pile forward. He gets thrown backwards off there. A, a nice tackle made yeah. by Max Denson, who grabbed him with one arm and threw him to the ground. Max Denson, the senior, 200 pounds. Looks like he stands down there at about six foot four. <laughs> he was yeah, one arm to bring down Noah to the ground. Yeah, there's, they, they've got a couple hosses inside yes. on their front, so it's tough to run that power game, but... You know, Noah got maybe one yard with the forward progress, and, you know, we're churning clock right here, so huge second down. Up to the Broken Bow, 46-yard line. It's second and eight for Wahoo. Kaminsky in the backfield. Bordowski to his left. Fakes the handoff, rolling out to his left. Kaminsky has time, throws it deep across the middle of the field. Mm. Too far. Had a touchdown go over the head of, of Barrett LaValle. That would have been sixth for the Warriors. Yeah, that was huge. Just a, just a couple feet long. Beautiful throw. Beautiful route. Again, the Warriors are taking some shots downfield, though, taking John. Shots. They've had I mean, some opportunities. Coach Fox, when he sees something in coverage, if he sees they're in cover three and you can run guys up the seam, that safety can only cover one dude. You can't cover both of them. And so, you know, it's a tough matchup for them. And every once in a while, a play-action shot 
just loosens that defense up. And now it's a big third and eight here for the Warriors as Kaminsky has it, nope. fakes the throw out to the flat, now running out of time. He'll throw it away. As he threw it right at the feet of Sam Edmonds, but that time, Broken Bow was very ready for that wide receiver screen on yeah. the other side. Yeah, that was a good decision by Jace. You could tell he wanted to throw the ball, but immediately he saw coverage and he wasn't going to throw it to the other team. And it's either run it and get a couple yards, you know, throw it at someone's feet. We're going to punt it, and then we'll be – hopefully we'll have some good field position um, from a defensive standpoint. 7.40 to go here in the third quarter. Wahoo doesn't take a ton of time, only about a minute off the clock. But now they're trying to pin Broken Bow inside of their own 15 here with a good punt. Good snap. Punt going right to left. Takes a bounce at the 10. Mm and rolls caught by Broken Bow and taken up past the 15 to about the 17 yard line. I think it was Koble again on the punt return, which is so bizarre. But yeah. it's first and 10 for Broken Bow, now back deeper than they have been all night on their own 16 yard line on the left hash. Yeah, let's play some good defense. Let's not get any silly penalties and uh, let's make them punt it back to us and we'll be at midfield again. 7.30 to go here in the third quarter. It's Wahoo 12, Broken Bow 0, but a big drive here for the Indians trying to go 80-plus yards to cut this lead in half at least. Here come the Indians up to the line of scrimmage as Koble will walk under center with one back behind him and two backs off to his right and left. Now Koble keeps it himself, jukes out of one tackle, breaks mm. one, two, three tackles, and rolls forward. There were so many Warriors there, but Koble showing off some of his elusiveness, makes Barrett LaValle miss and get 11 yards up to his own 28-yard line and a first down. Yeah, kind of got lost in the shuffle there. He, he hit that dive back in the A-gap, and everybody collapsed on that, and then he just kind of stumbled his way through our linebackers yeah. and... You know, you make a play right there, it's a couple yards, but he slipped through, so here we go, first and ten. Start over. Seven minutes to go here in the third quarter. It's first and ten for Broken Bow on their own 28-yard line left hash. Koble comes up to the line of scrimmage with Chaplin standing behind him. Chaplin will get that, fake the handoff to him. Mm. Koble kept it himself, and maybe not a great decision as he had nowhere to go with it as Harrison Krieger and Braylon Iverson were there to make the tackle right at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, seemed like, seemed like Chaplin had a little lane there. He kind of yeah. stumbled forward for about four, yeah. but he just didn't have the ball. Yeah, I'm glad you saw what I saw. That's yeah. I mean, Chaplin fell forward all the way to the 36-yard line. But, yeah, he just didn't have the football. And next thing you know, Coble's getting pushed backwards, a gain of a half of a yard. It's 6.14 to go here in the third quarter. And second and nine for Broken Bow. Coble now will hand it off to Chaplin, and he fights forward just shy of the 35 to the 34 for a gain of three. And making it third and manageable now here for Broken Bow, who's third and four. You're really about the longest about how yeah. long they would like to be. You don't want to go tough. much longer for them. I mean, they can get four yards, but if they don't, then they've got a tough decision to make because really they're we'll – Clock see is how not their here. friend with the way their offense runs. 5.37 to go here third quarter. It's third and four from their own 34. Koble under center. Oop, he missed play. communication, and he's thrown down in the backfield. He was looking to hand it to Chaplin off to the right. Bryce ran to the left, and Koble gets thrown down in behind the line of scrimmage. It's fourth down. That's a huge misstep. Great for us, but uh, for them, you get your whole Maryland eye backfield. you got three dudes running to the left. And quarterback and turns up. to the right. Yeah, we're lucky we didn't get faked out by the backfield, but the guys up front hit their gaps and – the warm embrace of Eli Emerson stopped that play in its tracks. Eli Emerson and Jake Scanlon have, Braylon Iverson, have all been so great tonight for Wahoo. It's fourth and four with 4.52 to go. The punt unit is out, gets a good one away to the far sideline. It'll bounce down that sideline and continue to roll all the way to the Wahoo 30-yard line. And that's where it will stop. 4.41 to go here in the third quarter. It's Wahoo 12, Broken Bow 0, and now we have some whistles. And I think there was a flag thrown as well, which, oh boy, this could really hurt. I'm trying to see even was where it, the flag was. 
Yeah, was the flag after the kick or before the kick? And who was it on? His the key. flag is thrown at the Wahoo 45 yard line. Okay. Kind of an odd spot. As that's where the white hat you can see on your screen is yep. walking right now. It looks like they were communicating with the Warriors sideline over there. And here comes the white hat to center field. Now he's talking to the Broken Bow sideline. It's a personal foul against Wahoo. Wow. The Warriors would have had it on their own 30, but now they're backed up quite a ways. Well, I don't know what that I was don't know. Was that a blindside block? Was that a... a I think that's what Chad Fox is wondering too over there. He's still talking to the White Hat and three other side judges as he's saying, what just happened? Wahoo would have it first and 10 on their own 30. Because the ball wasn't even returned. It just rolled to a stop, and they downed it. So there was no, there was no action. Kind of well, puzzling. Yeah, now we're seeing where are they going to move the football to. I think inside of the 20. I mean, is that a 15 none of the yards from the end moving. of the play? So yeah, they started at the like, 30. Are they going to walk it to the 15? I know. The flag was thrown at the 45, but they're going to walk this thing all the way back to the Wahoo 15. Wow. That goes down as a big punt and a big change of field for Broken Bow now after a penalty that we didn't – how could it have even happened? Wow. The <laughs> Warrior fans really not happy. Chad Fox seems like he didn't get a great explanation at all saying how is that even – it basically seems like he's over there saying, how is that even possible? Yeah, they, and it seems like the officials are struggling to come up with a good explanation for him, really. So they committed a personal foul while the ball was in the air? That would have to be a blindside block or a hands to the face? I don't know. It's first and ten for Wahoo. Now on their own 15-yard line on the right hash. And now Jace Kaminsky's talking to the white hat saying, how in the world – yeah, the chain guys haven't got back there yet. They were wondering what was going on, too. So now the chains will be set. And Wahoo will have it. 4.41 to go here, third quarter. Now we're ready to go. Kaminsky in the backfield. Kip Brigham stands to his left. Jace looking to throw out to the flat. Caden Smart Thanks, has Caden. the catch. 20, 25, right. 30. And there's all the penalty yardage back and then some. Caden Smart's first play of the night. There's old 26 making a play right there. Just a nice swing route. You know, the way they're set up with him playing the wing, he's always blocking, blocking, blocking. He just sprinted for the, for the wheel route, the arrow right there. Nobody picked him up because they're all thinking run, run, run. Wahoo gets all the penalty yardage back and then some. It's first and 10 Wahoo. Now on their own 33-yard line. Clock stops with 418 to go here into this third quarter. Kaminsky, now Smart gets the handoff off to the right side, following some blockers, gets past the line of scrimmage, and the pile falls forward up near the 40-yard line. Well, they actually spot him back at about the 37-yard line, so a little bit further back than what I saw, but it's 3.55 to go here third quarter, and Caden Smart now having an impact in this Now you got half. one of our guys that's fresh, you know. Yep. And now, I right. mean... Look who's lining up in the slot over there. We got Mr. Markson. You know, these young guys that are fresh are just ready to go out there. It is second and six. Kaminsky rolls to his left looking to throw and does to the sideline, but it's too far as it goes over the head of Caden Kristen here on the near sideline. And good coverage downfield that time as J Jace was initially looking for Sam Markson, but it was actually the linebacker, Bryce Chaplin, who ran with him and had good coverage. It's a busy guy tonight. He has been. Boy, he is. He has been effective. It is now third and six, though, for Wahoo, who once again have not taken off very much time off the clock. 3.34 to go here in this third quarter. Big play here for the Warriors to try and continue the drive. Avery Weeding goes in formation in the backfield. Chase hands it up the middle, and going absolutely nowhere is Wahoo. It was Kip Brigham on the carry. He got to the line of scrimmage. That's it. But, boy, getting a big first down for Wahoo to at least not have to punt it from your own end zone. But then the Warriors do nothing with it after that. Yeah, swinging punches. Both teams swinging punches, and they're just standing in there. It's a heavyweight fight right now. And we've got a war of attrition going that looks to be going 
just about to the end of the third quarter here. Three minutes to go here in the third quarter, and Wahoo has to punt it away again. Line drive punt. Fair catch signal and made just inside of the 30 by Eli Kobel. He catches it as, at his own 29-yard line, and that's where the quarterback will set up shop. <laughs> it's truly, every time, I know every time I say it, but it's just the first time all season I've seen the quarterback field the punts, but he has it. First and 10 on his own 29-yard line, 2.51 to go. And can the Warrior defense stand tall again, John? Yeah, he doesn't have to go far. He catches a punt, takes a few yeah, steps right. backwards, and <laughs> leads the huddle. Yeah, Warrior defense once again. Here we go. Big plays. Big first and second down right here. Maryland Eye. Yep. Eli Coble comes out in that formation under center. Takes the snap and hands it off to the left side and diving through several different bodies that time for the Indians. It looked like it was Cruz Safronic out of the backfield. And literally, he takes two steps and just head first dives through three different guys to get seven yards. Wow. Yeah, they found that gap and... I mean, they're probably coached, get your shoulder pads low and just get what you can get. <laughs> it looked like he was diving into a swimming pool. Anything over three yards is gravy. 2.20 to go third quarter. It's second and three for Broken Bow on their own 36-yard line left hash. Coble hands it off again in the backfield and diving forward for a first down is the Indian. That time, Coy Warden on the carry takes it up to his own 40. A gain of four and a first down, and whistles. The clock stops at 2.03, now starts again at two minutes. Broken Bow just continuing, but we're seeing a lot of different guys. Coy Warden, Cruz Safronic, we called Aiden Markinum his name a couple of times. It's first and ten now for Broken Bow on their own 40 in between the hashes. This time it's a handoff Another, to Chaplin, and he's cut down immediately. Him and Coble were both hit instantly right at the line of scrimmage, a gain of a half of a yard. It's second and nine from, well, they actually said, yeah, they spot it right back at the 40. The near judge said that he got half of a yard, and the far judge said he didn't get anywhere. Yeah, I don't know who finished with the ball, but both of those guys yeah, got I hit immediately. Yeah, I don't either, honestly. <laughs> and the quarterback got cut down real quick, so maybe he pulled it and kept it because they didn't mark it one inch forward. Good push by the guys up front. One fifteen to go here in the third quarter. Wahoo still leads 12-0. to It's second and 10 for Broken Bow on their own 40-yard line. Coble hands it off to the left side, and Warden fights through one tackle, but Harrison Krieger holds on a gain of half a yard. That's it. It's third and very long now for Broken Bow, not where they like to live on offense. No, this is they're off schedule right now because there are three yards in a cloud of dust, and they've had two plays that have went about one yard total. So advantage Wahoo. Let's be smart and not uh, give up a play action or you know, Chaplin knifing through for a seven or eight yard gain because they'll go for it on fourth and short. Eli Coble has thrown it twice tonight. One time he got batted at the line of scrimmage and he caught it. And the next one he threw it right to Sam Edmonds who dropped an interception. Third pass of the night. He's under pressure. Avoids the sack. Throws oh. it downfield and it's caught at the 50-yard line. What a catch made. That time by number six, the tight end William Moniger comes up with his second reception of the season on Eli Coble's 20th pass of the year that's been completed for a monster broken bow first down. Wow. Good coverage by Sam right there, but and we had pressure on the quarterback. He just made a great throw to about the only place he could have, and that's a catch right at the sticks. Good route running by broken bow. Four seconds to go. Coble will run one play, and he's hit after a play action that was covered nicely by Wahoo, a gain of one, and that's the end of quarter number three. Well, a fast third quarter as we expected, and nobody could really do anything on offense. So hold up those four fingers. There's 12 minutes of football left, and Wahoo leads it 12 to zero. You're tuned into Warrior Football on Saunders County Online and Wahoo Public, and we'll be back in 60 seconds. Hot Oil and Propane is continuing to be family-run and owned for 60 years. OOP Inc. is your Wahoo supplier for gas, diesel, propane, oil, grease, and products for your yard and acreage, including seed, fertilizer, and sprays to help keep your lawn and pastures beautiful. Find them online at OOPIncWahoo.com, call 402-443-3563, or stop by 3288 Ponderosa Drive. OOP Inc. serving for 60 years thanks to you. Stop at First Bank of Nebraska to get our new Wahoo Warrior branded debit card. Every transaction gives back to Wahoo Public Schools. 
All you need is a First Bank of Nebraska checking account and ask for the Warrior Card. For more information, go to firstbankne.com. First Bank of Nebraska, serving our communities, investing in you. Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. Austin McNorton and John Herrera here with you on Saunders County Online and Wahoo Public YouTube for Wahoo Warrior Football here on the first Friday night of November. Austin McNorton, Blake Maxson, John Herrera, and Addie Lurman. It's a full broadcast crew, and there's 12 minutes of football remaining. It's second and nine broken bow on the Wahoo 49-yard line, and it looks like a false start to start the first play of the fourth quarter. A little unforced error there by one of the linemen up front. Looked like maybe the right guard jumped. Their snap counts are, they are so close and they're so aggressive on their snap counts. It almost looks like a false start all the time, but if the center's the one moving, it's not a false start. I think they're going to make this go against Wahoo. The way they the calling that an offside? Pointing, I think they're going to say Wahoo moved first. Oh, Unbelievable. They say Wahoo moved first. Wow. So, so a hard count. They must have did a hard count, drew us off sides, and made their guy jump off sides. Yeah. So it's a five-yard penalty to start the fourth quarter against Wahoo and makes a second and nine, now second and four. Much more manageable, and Eli Coble gets it immediately with a run right up the gut for five yards up to the Warrior 39 and an Indian first down. Gosh, John, that penalty hurts a lot. That's a killer because we had him off schedule. We were one good defensive play away from, you know, being in another key third down, fourth down situation, and now they're, they're, they got life now. They got, they got energy. They're on the 40-yard line, and they're heading in, and we want to get a stop right here. 11.40 to go here in the football game. Wahoo 12, Broken Bow 0. Coble hands it off to Chapel, fakes the handoff, keeps it himself, dodging a couple of tacklers, and fights inside of the Warrior 35 to the 34. Boy, he is so good at pulling that ball at the last second because once again, Chaplin got hit instantly. Coble keeps it somehow and gains five yards, making it second and five inside of the Warrior 35. Yeah, and the first two things with option, you got the dive back and then the guy, as soon as he pulls it, you need to have a linebacker right there. And that time he just made a move and got himself five yards. Second and five for Broken Bow between the hashes on the Wahoo 34. And now there's a lot of whistles before the snap, a flag thrown, and this time it is a false start against Broken Bow. So now that hurts the Indians, because once again, John, now they're off schedule, second and ten. Yeah, now they're back to back to the original line. So And that time I honestly didn't see it. <laughs> yeah, it was hard to tell what was going on. They they get up the ball and they snap it pretty quick, and that timing has to be perfect. And, I mean, they get up there, put it down, set, snap. I mean, obviously, you got to come set for a count, but they don't waste a lot of time. 10.50 to go here in the football game as the clock runs. It's second and 10 for Broken Bow on the Wahoo 41-yard line. Coble under center with three backs behind him. Coble fakes the handoff, yes. looking to throw, under pressure, throws it across the middle, and it's nearly picked. Sam Edmonds looked like he had another one go in and out of his hands. I think that ball hit their guy's hands, too. Yep. I think... I could hear their their broadcast team was hollering over there. I think I think both guys missed an opportunity right there. Aiden Markham was the intended target. It went through his hands, and then Sam Edmonds was right there to have a chance of it. But now, with 10.38 to go in the football game, Wahoo leads 12-0. This is a massive couple of plays. It's third and 12 for the Indians. It's huge, yeah. On the Wahoo 41-yard line. Likely have two plays to get it. But it all starts here as it's handed off to the near side, Coy Warden. He's trying to push the pile forward, but Josh Edmonds won't let him as he takes it to the Wahoo 38, making it fourth and nine now for Broken Bow with 10.23 to go. I'm guessing they were trying to get a, a good chunk of that, yep, trying that to get yardage of back it. and yep. see what fourth down brings because I can't see him punting. No, no, Two not scores, at this point. scores, fourth quarter game, and the clock's just running. I mean... They need to come up with something here to try to extend this drive. The Warrior fans starting to make some noise as they know how big of a play this could be. Indian fans a little bit nervous here directly below us in the broadcast booth. Under 10 minutes to go. It's fourth and nine for the Indians on the Warrior 38-yard line. Coble is under center. 
Now moves Markham off to the right side of the formation. Coble will fake the handoff, or did actually hand it off to Chaplin, Ooh, who gets close I to the first down him. marker. I mean, it is right at the 29 is where they spot it, which is really close to the first down marker. They're going to have to probably measure that. That looks really close. Yep, and they will stop the clock, and they will measure it as the clock stops 942. I think... That's super close. I think he needed the 29, and from the looks of it here, it looks like the nose of the football is over it. Yeah, I think we got a ball, a ball on the other side of the 29, so he's kind of almost like 28 and yeah, just about 29. So we'll see, we'll see where this chain ends up here. Oh, that's if, super yep. close. They got it by the nose of the football. First down, broken bow. Inches. Inches. Wow. And the drive stays alive for the Indians as broken bow fans come to their feet. That's a big, big play. So first and ten now for broken bow as they convert on fourth and nine with just a simple run play to Bryce Chaplin. First and ten, broken bow on the Wahoo 29-yard line with 9.40 to go. Coble under center. Chaplin gets the handoff up the middle. And once again, Jake go. Scanlon and company are there. Jake Scanlon, Braylon Iverson, all there for Wahoo, as well as number 50 for the Warriors. And that is Jonas Schnockenberg making his first tackle of the night. A gain of one, 9.20 to go in the football game. Wahoo leads 12-0. to Yeah, this is just a, a rock fight down Cut there right me, now. I man. mean, they are just pounding on each feels other. Feels like a rugby match with oh, all the battles and the scrimmage. Yeah, it's a and, scrum. Oh my goodness. The yeah, whole game's literally. been a scrum. So here comes Broken Bow to the line quickly. Eli comes under center with three backs directly behind him. Whoa. Coble has it. Movement And yeah, there. there's a lot of movement we could see at that time. The Warriors shifted on defense and looks like their O-line got caught off guard and, and kind of jumped. And it looks like, yeah, John, you mentioned that earlier in the third quarter. Wahoo is moving their defensive linemen around a lot and it looks like the yeah. Indians are a little confused. These guys are regimented, robotic, gap steam guys, you know, block down, get to backer, block down, get to backer. And all of a sudden, the guy you were thinking you're blocking down on shifts to your other shoulder. He's like, whoa, well, who do I get? And then all of a sudden, the linebacker comes in and. You move before the ball moves. You move, yeah. You move before the ball. And that's unforced errors that really have kind of troubled the Indians tonight a little bit. And unfortunately for Broken Bow, that clock continues to run, and they are taking their time. It's second and 14 now from the Wahoo 33 with 8.35 to go in the football game, and the Warriors leading 12-0. to zero. Coble under center. A back goes in motion. Coble yes. has it, rolling out to the right, looking to throw. Has time. Now under pressure. Throws it back oh, to the near Pete's side. Sake. Wide open at the 25-yard line, 20, 15, and diving down to the 11. Wide open here on the near sideline for the Indians. It looked like it was number 12, Coy Warden, with the reception and a big first down for Broken Bow. Yeah, they rolled out to the right, and somebody just lost track of their man or, or their zone, depending on what they're in, and there was nobody there. That ball was in the air for a while, too. Yeah, it was. 8-12 to go here in the football game. It's first and 10 for Broken Bow. Now on the Warrior 11-yard line, so they can get a first down. Coble is under center. Takes the snap. Handoff goes up the middle to Chaplin, and he's thrown backwards once again by Braylon Iverson. What a tackle by Braylon. Hitting Chaplin instantly. He gets to the 10, a gain of one. It's second and nine with 7.45 to go here in the football game. And Wahoo leading 12 to zero. Yeah, he's their dude. And I got to think down here on the goal line, Yeah, he's going to get touches down here. He leads the team with 13 touchdowns on the ground this season. Under center again is Coble with three backs behind him. Eli takes the snap and it goes to Warden off to the right side. He fights forward inside of the five to the four before he's brought down by Avery Weeding on that far side. A gain of about six that time. It's third and four now for a broken bow inside of the Warrior five yard line with 7.10 to go. Eli Emerson there to make the tackle as the Warrior fans trying to make some noise here. It's a monster play to say the least for both yeah, teams. Two plays in a row right here. We gotta, we gotta buckle down. Coble comes under center. 
Eli takes the snap. It's Chaplin. No, faking the handoff and diving towards the goal line. Down at the one-yard line, they say. Down at the one-yard line for Broken Bow was Eli Coble, which honestly should be a first down now for the Indians. Yeah. How about that? It'll be first and goal inside the one-yard line. And this is, this is about as close impossible with this offense to stop and now the warrior fans just want the clock to start it does 644 to go in the football game it's wahoo 12 broken bow zero but it's first and goal now for the indians on the one yard line ball on the left hash coble under center takes the snap chaplin dives mm. forward to the goal line i don't think he got there he, he did got, not he got cut down right away instantly caden smart was there along with the warriors eli emerson to make the tackle instantly on Bryce Chaplin. He might have got an inch. I mean, that ball, the nose of that ball is as close to the goal line as you can get. Those guys up front got to really get down and root hog and really get some push here. 6.07 to go here in the football game. Wahoo leads 12-0. It's second in goal for Broken Bow on the one-yard line. Coble comes under center, takes the snap. Chaplin again dives for it, and again, oh, they gave it to him that time. He right. got over the pile, but he got cut down. He just happened to lunge out. and He just reached the ball across that kind of invisible wall, I guess you could say, but it's a touchdown for Broken Bow. And with 5.55 to go here in the football game, they have cut the Warrior lead in half. It's 12-6 to six now for Wahoo. What a drive that was for the Indians. Converting on fourth and nine with a run play, a big pass play, and now a huge point after attempt. As once again, Eli Coble will do the point after duties. And Chaplin's holding. It's up, and it is good. That's to the, the track. Indians can get a point after easily. 5.55 to go in the football game. It's Wahoo 12, Broken Bow 7. Now everyone a little bit more nervous. We'll be back in 60 seconds. The best deal in town is at the Wahoo DQ. Our $7 meal deals run all day, every day. For only $7, you get your choice of an original cheeseburger or a three-piece chicken strip basket. Each option includes a regular order of fries, a medium drink, and a small sundae. Feeling hungrier? Upgrade that Sunday to a small blizzard for an extra $2. The Wahoo DQ is located at 1122 North Chestnut Street and open 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. Sunday through Thursday. And then on Fridays and Saturdays, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. We want to remind you, open enrollment is right now for policies beginning January 1st. We're your local agency with locations across Nebraska, including Wahoo, Grand Island, Omaha, Lincoln, and Fort Calhoun. If your employer doesn't offer affordable insurance, please let us help you get the coverage you deserve at an affordable price. And if you're over 65, there are so many new update options out there, and we're up to speed on all of them. Let us help you navigate what works best for you. Voted Omaha Magazine's Best of Omaha, call us at 402-858-0557 or scan the Q QR code to provide your basic information. Anchor Insurance Agency. And welcome back to Wahoo Warrior Football in Saunders County Online and Wahoo Public YouTube. Austin McNorton, John Herrera, Blake Maxson, and Addie Learman here with you in Wahoo, Nebraska on a brisk Friday night, the first Friday night in the month of November. 5.55 to go here in the football game. It's Wahoo 12, Broken Bow 7. Hands team right there. As a line drive kick bounces at the 15 and fielded at the 11 for Wahoo. Trying to find a lane down the near sideline. Has one. Gabe Harris takes it up Woo. to the Warrior 38. After catching it at his own 11, <laughs> that's a big return for the Warriors there. Smiling Gabe making a play. As a coach, I'm sitting here going, go down, go down, go down. Don't risk a, you know, don't risk a turnover. But Gabe's a fast kid. If he breaks one more tackle, he's down the sideline. That's a huge play. That's a huge play. Rather than being backed up inside of your own 15, you now have breathing room up to your own 38-yard line with 5.46 to go. Broken Bowl has all three of their timeouts. Kaminsky in the backfield. Noah Bordowski stands to his right. Jace takes the snap, looking to throw out to the flat and does. It's caught over there by Kip Brigham, and he lost the football, fumbled it. And Broken Bow, I think... Kip got back on top of it. It's close. Nope, Broken Bow has it. Turnover. Wow. Wow. Just like that, 
Broken Bow has a chance to win this football game with a detrimental turnover for Wahoo. That's tough. All right, defense, it's time for the next man up. We've got to step up. We've got to make a stop right here. Broken Bow now has the football after Kip Brigham fumbles it on the far sideline on the wide receiver screen. It's first and 10 for Broken Bow on the Wahoo 34 yard line right hash, 537 to go in the football game and all three timeouts. So back comes down Eli Coble and company and it's handed up the middle and a big run on first down for Bryce Chaplin, or correction, that was actually Aiden Markham. He takes it up to the Warrior 30 for a gain of six on first down. It's a tough spot right here because the clock is ticking. They're obviously not in a hurry but if the drives continue, then it almost puts the defense in a spot in terms of timeouts. I mean, at a certain point, we've got to make a stop here. Coble gets it to Chaplin again, and he oh, breaks out of an go. ankle tackle, but then is thrown down nicely by Harrison Krieger in the backfield. Good job by Harry to stay with the play. A loss of one back to the Warrior 31-yard line. It's third and seven now with 4.45 to go in the football game. Obviously four down territory here. This is a big stand for the Warrior yeah. defense. About Part as, of the season, really. About as big a two defensive plays as you're going to have this season right now. Third and seven, 4.30 to go. Ball in between the hashes. Coble under center. Hands it up to Markham, and he dives forward to the Warrior 29. A gain of two. It is fourth and five. Biggest play of the night, biggest play of the season for both of these teams. 4-10. Everyone on their feet here in Wahoo. Wow. Sa safeties better be dialed in right here. This is a great time for a play action or a trickeration type of thing. Run a guy down the seam. And we'll keep it here as Broken Bow uses one of their final three timeouts, knowing this could potentially be the play of their season. We don't want to miss it. 4.05 to go in the game. It's Wahoo 12, Broken Bow 7. Fourth and five for the Indians on the Warrior 29-yard line. What's the key here for the Warrior defense, John? I think the key is, I, I think those front four, they got to continue playing physical, attacking, you know, attacking number seven it, when he steps one way or the other way. That quarterback has been pretty good booting out the ball. But our coverage guys on the back half have to be dialed in and reading their keys and making sure if that in man releases vertical, somebody better be picking him up. Because five yards is not that long of a pass. So, I mean, if they can get five yards on a throw, that's, that's an easy picking for them. But we got to cover those guys, and they shouldn't be able to do that if our coverage guys are dialed in. Play of the night right here. Play of the season, really. Everyone on their feet knowing just that. Here we go, Broken Bow still in their timeout huddle here on the near sideline, and here come the Indians. 4.05 to go. Each team has two timeouts, but it's fourth and five first for the Indians on the Warrior 29 yard line in between the hashes. Koble is under center with a back directly behind him. Koble fakes the pitch, looking to throw it out to the flat. Now under pressure, he'll tuck it and run to the far sideline. He will get the first down and more. He had all the time in the world and just used his legs on what was a throw covered. He uses his legs to get an Indian first down and keep the drive alive. It's a huge play. He just outran our guys to the sideline. He's a fast kid, good athlete. We covered that receiver. They ran one receiver down the seat, down the hash, and we locked him up, and he was looking for him, looking for him, and he just his line did a good job giving him time. First and 10 for the Indians now on the Wahoo 23-yard line. Right hash, 3.55 to go in the football game. Coble back under center. Loses oh. the football, and the Indians got back on it. Oh, Wahoo got it! That's Wahoo great. got it! Wahoo got it! The Warriors have the football! I don't know That's how, huge. I don't know how, but the Warriors got it! Eli Coble lost the football, and Wahoo got back on top of it! Two pretty Whoa. hefty turnovers there in the last minute and a half of this game right here. Now I got to think if you can squeeze as much air out of this football as you can, you got a you got a four minute offense on the chart. Let's let's do that. They're not gonna they're gonna use their timeouts. They're gonna be tough to stop here. It's first and ten. Wahoo on their own twenty five yard line. The Indians have two timeouts. 
Handoff goes to Bordowski. He bounces out of one tackle and then is cut down right at the 25 for no gain. Nice tackle made here on the outside by Dakota Baum, the defensive end for Broken Bow. And they use one of those final two timeouts, stopping the clock with 3.39 to go in the game. It's Wahoo 12, Broken Bow 7, and we'll be back in 30 seconds. Wahoo State Bank gives you the home team advantage. From the beginning of your financial experience with Penny Partners, Kids Club with Richie Rover, to student checking for those age 15 through 25, offering a variety of benefits that make banking easy when you're home or away, or if you're looking to finance the future home. Wahoo State Bank has the home team to work with you through life. Member FDIC. Sandstorm playing here in Wahoo, Nebraska. Austin McNorton, John Herrera here with you on Saunders County Online and Wahoo Public YouTube. 3.39 to go in the football game. It's Wahoo 12, Broken Bow 7. It's second and 10 for the Warriors on their own 25-yard line after getting a crazy turnover after the Warriors turned it over themselves. They now have an opportunity to try and Run out this clock. Broken Bow still has one more timeout. This is a huge second down play for both teams. Kaminsky in the backfield with Bordowski standing to his left. Noah will get the handoff up the middle, and the pile go. pushes forward, and Noah pushes forward to the Warrior 31-yard line, a gain of six, and the clock will run as Broken Bow will save that final timeout, keeping it in their back pocket with 3.20 to go in the football game. It's third and four for Wahoo on their own 31. Big play here, John. Yeah, big play, and you got to think it's going to be a running play of some sort. No chance for a clock stoppage here, um, whether it's a run or a pass. And we are empty right now. Kaminsky. Five wide. Empty in the backfield. Trips here to the near side, two to the far side. Kaminsky letting that clock continue to run. Now moves Noah into the backfield. Jace will keep it himself up the middle. Now bounces it to the outside. There we go. 35, 40. There goes Kaminsky, 50. And nice. steps out of bounds. Jace Kaminsky with the biggest run of the season for him. The sophomore quarterback takes it into Indian territory for a Warrior first down. Ice in his veins. The sophomore making plays. He's not just a pretty face that drops dimes. He can run it too. Just being the alpha right there, I mean, you got a sophomore out there running the ball around. That's a huge play. That's as good. A, that's a big a play as he's made his entire life on the football field. That's his 57th carry this season. It's first and 10 for Wahoo. Now at the Indian 48-yard line. Kaminsky now hands it up the middle to Noah. Bordowski with his biggest run of the night. He Blow fights whistle, for it. Please. And now the whistle finally Jeez. blows as Noah takes it all the way up to the Indian 40-yard line. A gain of eight on first down for Noah. A gain of seven, they say. 2.30 to go in the football game. The Warriors leading 12-7. to Now you're in a tough spot if you're on the broken bow sideline. With only one timeout, you really don't want to waste it here at second and short. If we happen to get the first down, we're just about in knee time, which is the greatest formation in football. But we got to get three yards right now. 2-10 to go in the football game. It's Wahoo 12, Broken Bow 7. Second and three for Wahoo on the Broken Bow 40-yard line. Kaminsky in the backfield. Noah stands to his left. Jace takes the snap. Noah gets the handoff up the middle and fights forward before he's wrapped up around the ankles right at the line of scrimmage. And a timeout called okay. by Broken Bow. A minute 48 to go in the football game. Third and three when we come back. You're tuned in to Warrior Football on Saunders County Online and Wahoo Public YouTube. We'll be back in 30 seconds. Rivalry Apparel in Wahoo is excited to celebrate their fifth anniversary the month of October. Stop in to say hi to the Rivalry team or go to RivalryApparel.com now to get your gear for fall sports. Then be on the lookout for winter sports apparel for your favorite local teams and schools. Rivalry is open Tuesdays, Thursdays 10 to 6, Wednesdays, Fridays 10 to 5, Saturdays 9 to noon. Call 402-870-0780 for any questions. The team at Rivalry Apparel wants to help you have a winning season. We are your biggest fan. Rivalry Apparel in Wahoo is excited to celebrate. Austin McNorton and John Herrera here back with you on Saunders County Online. In Wahoo, Nebraska, no timeouts left for Broken Bow. 1.48 to go in the football game. It's Wahoo 12, Broken Bow 7. 
and a big play here for the Warriors to try and end the game. Third and two for Wahoo on the Broken Bow 39-yard line. Here's the heavy set. It's Kaminsky in the backfield. Now Bordowski stands back there alone. Noah looks to the sideline. Waits for Chad Fox, who will call a timeout. We'll keep it here on Saunders County Online and Wahoo Public. A minute 48 to go, and John, this is an interesting spot here for the yeah. Warriors offensively. This is where you earn your money as a, as a, as a coach because you got to come up with the chess match. Okay, they checked the lookout. They didn't really like the look that they had. So now Broken Bow is going to come back. Do they change it up? Do we change it up? Do we come out instead of heavy? Do we come out in five wide? Who knows? I mean, you're, you're, you're probably going to see a variation of some sort here for Coach Fox. He's going to change it up. He's going to make those defensive guys see some eye candy in the backfield maybe, maybe see some motion, see a different formation that we haven't shown for a while. And, you know, it's a minute 48 left. Once we run this play, that clock's going to run for a little while. And if it's a first down, we're going to take a knee. But if it's not a first down, Is know, this four down territory, John? I, I think it's a punt situation myself. But Coach Fox, he might, he might roll the bones a little bit. But I'm thinking we're just going to get the first down right here. I'm not too All worried right. about it. Third and two for Wahoo with the ball on the Broken Bow 39-yard line and a minute 48 to go. Wahoo comes out in their interesting formation, and now Bordowski stands in the backfield alone. Noah takes the handoff off to the right side. He bounces it. it. A Warrior first down, and the watch is to it. It's got to be a late penalty. They're not going to call it. That's crazy. Noah gets shoved out of bounds after he's five yards on the track. No call, but that's a first down for Wahoo, who should be able to run out the rest of the clock. Yeah, I know what formation they're going to come out in now. Now it's taking knee time, and uh, and let's see if we can end this game so right here. So the clock did stop because Noah went out of bounds, but he takes it all the way to the Broken Bow 31-yard line. So now you just want clean snaps if you're Wahoo. Kaminsky has it, takes a knee, and with 1.37 to go in the football game, Wahoo leads 12-7. Now back to the Broken Bow 34-yard line. And it should, I think if my math it should is correct, be. it'll yeah. be close. On the play sheet, there's always a, a chart that has how much time can we run off if the team has three, two, one timeouts. And with zero timeouts, we should be able to take a knee right here four times. I wish there well, was a We won't have to clock. four times. There's no play clock here in Wahoo. Jace Kaminsky takes the football, takes it forward a couple. Now looks to the sideline as we are at 60 seconds so to go. So we've got to get under, so gotta, I believe it's 35 seconds. Okay. And then there won't have to be a fourth down play. You don't want to have a fourth down play. Boy, John. You want to wait till that official on the back starts waving his hand. That's the 5-4-3-2-1 count. So Jace is watching the black hat on the back right here to see okay. when he puts his hand up and when he starts waving. Clock at 35 seconds. I think we're done here. One more snap. How about this Warrior defense? Backs against the wall after the turnover. Broken Bow just scored, has all the momentum. But those Wahoo Warriors, those undefeated Wahoo Warriors, Hold on with a big, big, big win in the quarterfinals. And your Wahoo Warriors are two wins away from a state title. It is a great day, stressful day, but a Gosh. great day to be a Warrior. And we just watched a four-quarter hammer fight. And it just, the ball bounced in one way. two hours. The ball bounced <laughs> the other way. We had an awful turnover. They had an awful turnover. And a heavyweight fight. 12-7, to seven, unbelievable. Great job coaching. Great job with a physical night for the team. And the road to Lincoln, Austin, still goes through Wahoo. Unbelievable fight from these Warriors. Sydney, That's baby. The closest game that Wahoo has played all season. And they hold on to beat the Indians of Broken Bow. What a season it was for Broken Bow as it comes to an end with a 7-4 and four record here in Wahoo in a gut-wrenching 12-7 loss. And, John, I, I still am kind of scratching my head as to what even happened on that turnover for Wahoo. 
Oh my God! Somebody must have just laid the wood to that kid because when you hit when you hit a kid and the ball immediately comes out, that's a helmet on the ball, yeah, just I think perfect. That's what happened. That's a hard shot. Um, it's not like he just bobbled it and dropped it. I mean, that was a, you know, that was that was a hard was, shot by somebody. It was Eli Coble who kept the season alive on a fourth and five scramble. Then on the very next play, running the option. The Indians' Eli Coble keeps it, rolls out to the right, looking to maybe pitch it, and the next thing you know, the ball's on the ground, and the Warriors have it and are able to run the four-minute offense to perfection with a big run from Noah Bordowski oh, and a bigger run from Jace Kaminsky. Yeah, I mean, how about Jace coming up with the play of the season right there? I mean, yep. it's, it's short yardage, and the game is on the line, and instead of us coming out in our power set, we go five wide. What do you... What do you? I mean, everyone's going. Oh, look out! There's nobody to hand the ball to. But I've heard the coaches say this: Jace is a sneaky good runner, and he's a physical kid. He's not afraid to run into contact. He's not afraid of taking a hit. He's not afraid of delivering a hit. And so, and he's he's got some speed. And in a phone booth, he's got some shake too. So he shook a couple guys. He got his yardage, got the first down, and here we go. And John, what does a win like this do for Wahoo? Because Truthfully, these Warriors haven't faced a ton of adversity this year. I mean, they've had a lot of big games. They've had five shutouts where they put up 40 points. Yeah. They average 42 points per game on offense, only have 12 points tonight. This is by far the most adversity these Warriors have faced all year. Yeah. And you get a win. How crucial it's, is that? Oh, it's a testament to the kids' as poise, their character. You know, they're, they're so well coached that, you know, some teams, when they – get adversity for the first time they fold it up and they're like you know what we can't handle this mentally they couldn't handle it. but these guys kept swinging kept swinging broken bow kept swinging kept swinging and you know we got some good senior leadership we got tons of kids underclassmen that are just making plays at the right time how about how huge was gabe harris i mean gabe's a senior smart kid good kid good athlete he's back there on hands team not expecting to get the ball he's expecting him to kick it you know nine yards he catches it. Not only does he just catch it and take a knee, like most guys are told, just take a knee, go down. He makes a play, makes the guy miss, gets us good yardage. So even if that drive wouldn't have been successful, we're punting it to get field position. If, if he goes down back there right, and our drive isn't successful, yep. we're punting to midfield, and then everybody, everybody's a little puckered up for that last minute and a half. But, you know, he made a huge play. Chase made a huge play. The guys up front, the Hogs, Landon, Luke, uh, Jonas, Eli, all those guys up front. I know I'm missing a couple dudes, but those sure. guys up front all Jake night. Jake Scanlon. He might have been Jake the player Scanlon. of the night. Yeah. Yeah, if you're talking player of the night, I mean, he was in the backfield all night long. And when your job as a defensive end is to come down and hit, I mean, how big is that Chaplin kid? Like 200 pounds? Yeah. He's a horse. If your job is yeah, to come down hill pounds. and hit that kid every other play all night, that's a long night. I mean, Jake's probably going to be a little sore in the morning. He's kind of a, he's kind of a dude, but he's going to be sore in the morning. And uh, yeah, he he earned his stripes tonight. I mean, he's obviously a an all state caliber dude, but uh, wow. he had a physical game tonight. And what better way to end a night? You're just exhausted, battle worn, victorious, on to the semifinals for the Warriors. And let's go ahead, as once again you said it, John. These road to Lincoln, Nebraska, still goes through Wahoo. Let's go ahead and look at some of those other scores. We already know that Sydney pulled off a quote-unquote upset against Pierce by defeating the Blue Jays 41-34. So it'll be Wahoo versus Sydney on Friday. Uh, yeah, so Ashland Greenwood, it looks like they're going to hold on and beat Adams Central 27-0. And Boone Central, they defeated Auburn 56-7. to So it looks like it's all chalk. One, yeah. two, three, four here in Class C1. And my gosh, what yeah. Unbelievable. What a season it's been. And when you looked at the at the beginning of the season, and we're thinking, okay, who are the best teams in C1? You know, we weren't really sure where the Warriors would fall in that with all the youth and stuff, but everybody said Boone and everybody said Pierce. So you got those two guys that are – Pierce got knocked out. So, I mean, it's like, okay, so who else? Ashland was another one. Ashland's a powerful team. You got Ashland versus Boone in the semis. That will be a football game. <laughs> That's a massive game. And – I'm looking forward to going home tonight and watching some film on the Sydney Red Raiders. I mean, they're going to take a five-hour and 21-minute cruise to Wahoo 
next week. That game might be at noon. Heck, yeah. who knows when we play that game. So, but. yeah, we'll get confirmation from Mr. Robert Berry about when that time will be. Um, but I, final thoughts on tonight. I'm just trying to wrap my mind around what we just it's, saw. This is it was by like, far the most adversity that Wahoo has faced all season, and they get the win. How big Oh, my is God. Job? It was a... It was a, a stinking roller coaster. I'm up here. I'm getting the I'm getting the vibes like I was back on the side. Like, all right, God, we got to get a stop. We got to get a stop. Oh, Jace just comes out of nowhere, and makes a play. Defense makes a play. Whoever who we give award, the guys give an award every week called the hammer, which is like the most physical guy, okay. the best hit. Whoever knocked that the ball out of that quarterback's hand, I'm I'm calling it right now. Give that man a hammer because <laughs> that was the shot of the season. And we're a hard-hitting physical defense. Coach Iverson knows nothing else. You're going to feel it after you play Wahoo. And this was 12 to seven. I guarantee you, that's going to be a that's going to be a tough three-hour drive home for the Indians. But what a great showing they had. They can't hold their yeah. heads at all. I mean, they had a great, great season, and they took they took us to the mat. And you know, we're number one seed, obviously, but just a just a battle of wills. It's like what we talked about at the beginning of the game. Who's going to persevere? Every possession is precious. I mean, their their last possession, it, it felt like they had the, the momentum and they were going to punch it in just yep. with three or four yard gains. But we make a huge play after us giving up a huge play, actually. So <laughs> we really should have had that ball. But we give it up and then they give it up. It's just, just a great football game. And it's one for the ages, really, because those kids, for the rest of their life, they'll remember the night that they came to Wahoo, and they'll remember the night that they played Broken Bow in the quarters, and and you know had, had right a slugfest for right. an hour. I mean, a it was still two-hour game. Two-hour game. That's a two-hour game. The most <laughs> really intense. <a> minute fifty. <laughs> an I mean, hour how'd 50. you like to spend two hours of your life just getting punched in the face <laughs> and punching the other guy in the face over and over again? I mean, as a as a X line coach, D line, all line. I mean, I was just loving the physical nature of it, but a little stressful when it's 12-7 to 7 and the other team's got the ball. Wow. John, what a game. And we'll be back Great one. again on Friday night. Not sure the time because of Sydney's long travel, but the Wahoo Warriors are into the semifinals as they improve to 11-0 and, and ending Broken Bow's great season. They fall to 7-4 and four on the year as the Warriors win it 12-7. to seven. Thank you all so much tonight for tuning in to Wahoo Warrior Football on Saunders County Online, Wahoo Public YouTube. We could not have done it without Blake Maxson, Addy Learman. For John Herrera, I've been Austin McNorton saying so long from Wahoo, Nebraska, and go Warriors!